The council will come to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Laspada. Alderman Hopkins. Alderman Dow. Alderman Kane. Alderman Harrison. Alderman Sawyer. Alderman Mitchell. Alderman Harris. Alderman Beal. Alderman Zalowski Garza. Alderman Thompson. Alderman Cardenas. Alderman Quinn. Alderman Burke. Alderman Lopez. Alderman Coleman. Alderman Moore. Alderman Curtis. Alderman O'Shea. Alderman Taylor. Alderman Brookins. Alderman Rodriguez. Alderman Tabaras. Alderman Scott. Alderman Cito Lopez. Alderman Maldonado. Here. Alderman Burnett. Alderman Irvin. Here. Alderman Talaferro. Alderman Raboyas. Alderman Cardona. Alderman Wagaspak. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Alderman Austin. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Alderman Viegas. Alderman Mitz. Alderman Spasado. Alderman Nugent. Alderman Vasquez. Here. Alderman Napolitano. Alderman Riley. Alderman Smith. Alderman Tunney. Alderman Gardner. Alderman Kappelman. Alderman Martin. Alderman Osterman. Alderman Haddon. Alderman Silverstein. <coughs> Alderman Scott is present. Alderman Cicho is present. Your Honor, we have a quorum present. We have a quorum. The Pledge of Allegiance will be recited by Alderman Dow. Please stand. <coughs> the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Please remain standing for the invocation, which will be delivered by Father Michael Caruso of St. Ignatius Church. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for welcoming <clears throat> me today for deliver this invocation. I bring greetings on behalf of our 150th anniversary at St. Ignatius College Prep. And we're delighted to be here. I'm here joined by our principal, Brianna Lacko, Vice President for Development, John Chandler, and Eileen Junkins guiding us. You should know we are the grandparent institution of Loyola University, Loyola Academy, <coughs> Crystal Ray Jesuit High School, Christ the King Jesuit High School, and also, Chicago Jesuit Academy. So we are delighted to be here today and ask God's blessing upon all of you and your work. So let us pray. As St. Ignatius College Prep celebrates this anniversary of 150 years of educational service to the city of Chicago and the greater region, we do so in a spirit of gratitude. As part of the extensive educational mission of the Catholic Church in Chicago, we are grateful to be an anchor for our neighborhood and a source of light for the city of Chicago. We continue to welcome all students of promise and ability, not on their family's capacity to pay tuition. And we affirm our mission, which guides our work as a partner in building a just and caring society. Our mission reads, St. Ignatius College Prep a Jesuit Catholic school in the heart of Chicago is a diverse community dedicated to educating young men and women for lives of faith, love, service, and leadership. Through outstanding teaching and personal formation, the school challenges its talented student body to intellectual excellence, integrity, and lifelong learning and growth. Inspired by the gospel of Jesus Christ, this community strives to use God's gifts to promote social justice for the greater glory of God. Over the years, we have produced leaders for every profession, men and women of goodwill, newscaster Don Hasbrook, speaker Michael Madigan, Alderman Rod Sawyer and Patrick Thompson, leading financial strategists Melody Hobson and Richard Driehaus, entertainers Bob Newhart and John Mullaney, each of these men and women represent 30,000 alumni who are your neighbors, co-workers, and constituents. 
We are grateful for the support of the past and present leaders of the city of Chicago. Just as our founder, Father Arnold Damon, sought to foster a healthy partnership in educating the youth of Chicago to take their place in serving the common good, we affirm today our collaboration with the members of this chamber and ask that God will pour out his abundant blessings upon this body. May all of your deliberations, decisions, and projects serve the common good, and be blessed by Almighty God. And we make this prayer in his holy name. Amen. Thank you. I'll read the first part and read the rest. We will now have public comment. The council will now begin the public comment period, which is limited to a maximum of 30 minutes. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. The time remaining for each speaker is shown on the clock on the wall. Any written comments that have been submitted will be available for aldermanic review at the city clerk's desk. Please remember this is a forum for public comments and not questions. This first speaker is Ronald Jackson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, uh, Mr. Jackson. Lightfoot. I guess you uh, remember me. 34 uh, uh, forums, and Art Norman made a joke of it. He said, There is one of you that will be considered the chosen one. Mayor Lightfoot, you are now that chosen one. But there is a disparity in the city of Chicago that is still going unaddressed and that is the disparity of public mental health services that should be implemented throughout this whole entire city. All 77 uh, wards, or all 77 communities of this city, amongst its 50 wards, are begging. You can't, you can't sit up and have these conversations and talk about senseless violence in the uh, city. You can't continue to hold uh, these uh, backroom meetings and talk about services for other elements until you actually start talking about the root cause of what is happening in our communities. The disparities for those people with disabilities that access living would address. The homelessness in the city of Chicago. The things that are really at the core root of what is needed to better our city. And that is when you fail to look at public mental health services. But I need to take a moment because a, a, a beautiful young lady, well, elderly lady by the name of Dorothy Gray actually sent you a book that I, I failed to uh, bring with me because it talks about the caterpillar having 16 feet and going through a metamorphosis for which it turns into a butterfly. That's what we need to do. We need to take each one of those 16 elements that has put us in a state of suffrage and made sure that <clears throat> they become a metamorphosis that people could actually believe in and take wings and fly. So I'm asking you, push forward. Let's not stall anymore on the task force for uh, looking at mental health services. As I come to a close, I would also ask that Thank you for allowing me this opportunity of being the first public speaker in a long time, and especially being a man of color. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. The next speaker is Mr. George Blakemore. Mr. George Blakemore. Who is Mr. Blakemore? Mr. Blakemore is a hater. He hates corruption. He hates fraud, waste, and abuse. He hates a wicked democratic machine that has been uh, going on here in this city. He hates a sanctuary, too. Mr. Blakemore hated. Why do you feel this way, Mr. Blakemore? Because 
the negative effect that it has on the black community. If anybody needs sanctuary, it's black people. These illegal peoples are coming over in the workforce, getting jobs, good service, health, education, and everything that the blacks are entitled to by being a legal citizen. Illegal is against the law. Legal is within the law. So again, I challenge black leadership. Black leadership. I've never heard a black person get up to uh, one of our leaders and talk about the negative effect of gentrification when it comes to illegal immigrants coming in. They are silent, but these Hispanics always advocate for their people, legal or illegal. They will come up and tell you and help their people. I was wrong. Something is wrong with the black leadership here. When you see 300,000 people from this city leaving black and other people coming into this city, white, Hispanic, Asian, why? The question that Mr. Blakemore is asking, why are black people leaving the city of Chicago? Why are they leaving Cook County? <clears throat> what, what, what's the issue that they say, we got to get out of here? No jobs they're receiving. Goods or contracts, abandoned lots, a ghetto, no stores. But some of the reason is because you make bad choices. You choose bad leaders. You got no stores. You got no, you don't even a liquor store, a drive, nothing in these ghettos because you got bad leadership and you continuously select them. You won't have one Hispanic orphan will get up and, and talk against uh, their people getting their sanctuary coming in and from the south border. They, they want them here because they're their people. They want to help them. But what do ours do? Silent! All of you! All of you are disgraceful! What would motivate you to want somebody else to come in? Why would you do that? Thank you, Mr. Blakemore. The next speaker is Ms. Sandy Schnellner. Sandy Schnellner. Good morning, Madam Mayor. City Council members, my name is Sandy Schneller. Crime is on a high in our city. It has reached 8% higher in 2018 with gun violence than it has uh, occurred over the years. Reaching 1,407 incidents thus far. July 4th holiday weekend, there were 68 gun crime violences, six fatalities. One particular incident on the near north side of Chicago, on Saturday afternoon, July 6th, young men exchanged gunfire back and forth across Division Street, shattering the windows of the Chase Bank. A young lady at 16 years old narrowly escaping with her life as she stood waiting for the CTA bus right in front of that bank. You see, the, bank, the bus arrived just two minutes before that shooting <coughs> occurred. What is being done about this? Now, you go out in the summertime with your activities, with your children and your significant others and others. But remember, our city is un under fire here. You may know that gun violence spiked between July and August on Fridays and Saturdays between the hours of 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. But remember, our police department should not be weighted down with the blame for this. As leaders of our great city, remember that you hold the key to change here. You are the ones are li largely responsible for this. You, sh you have at your fingertips all the resources necessary 
Encourage your community clergy. Encourage business owners and strong residents of the communities to become mentors to our youth. Because you see, they weren't born with guns in their hands. They were nurtured by the wrong people. The mindsets of our youth must be redirected. Their engagements must be rerouted. It's of urgency that the leaders step up. You must not give up. The great and late Thomas Edison said, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is to just always try one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schnellier. The next speaker is Mr. Melvin Bailey. Hey, thank you, City Council. Thank you for allowing me to speak one more time. And you know, I'm always advocating for the hardest to serve men and women who struggle with social profiling. And Mayor, and I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna talk about the past and bring it real uh, fastly to the present. Back in 2013, we had a meeting with to the building department and these are legal documents. I, pull, I went online, pulled all the information up that we was talking about these vacant and abandoned buildings in our community, how we can save them and keep our kids in our community by giving them a job with these vacant and abandoned buildings. And here is the email that we had, because it, it's legal document now. Email is our legal document. And Lawrence Grisham at that time was the commissioner. And Brian Essenberg, uh, Miss Judy Freeland, Anthony Simpkins, and I'm not apologetic by mentioning their name, but I am apologetic that we haven't did anything sooner to make sure that we can advocate to get these the guns now out of the kids' hands. I got a couple of young men here. I know they're not going to stand up. They off Chicago Avenue and Ridgeway. And Mayor, I heard you talk to the young man on Chicago Avenue and Ridgeway. I went over there. They are here today. And I told them that I will bring them down here so they can at least see how this political process goes. They can have a voice. They don't have to pick up a gun. They use their voice to make sure they make changes in their community. And I'd like to uh, say again, and I, and I have to send a shout out to, up to Washington, D.C., Miss Maxine Waters. Miss Maxine Waters, when I went, me and uh, Mr. Gator Bradley, we went up to Washington to get into the banking program for Chicago. I couldn't link up with the housing department here. We had to go to D.C. and get with Maxine Waters, and she said, what you need? This the congresswoman. She said, Melvin, don't worry about it. I'm going to put you in the FAFA, which is a uh, federal housing finance agent, which dealing with F Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. She said, you can look at all the inventory for the city of Chicago and start rehabbing houses. She said, what's going on in Chicago? I said, I don't know. That's why I'm up here in Washington, D.C. talking to you. That's a shame I had to go all the way to Washington, D.C. to get results in Chicago about the vacant and abandoned properties that the bank own and Freddie and Fannie own to try to provide some jobs for these young men in the city of Chicago. Come on now. Come on now. That is a disgrace. That's a disgrace for the city of Chicago that I had to fly to D.C. So, in closing, Mayor, we would love to be in the five-year housing plan because we can keep guys right in our neighborhood. They need to rewrite that. And then now I know I'm going to get a letter saying, Melvin, you still owe $10,000 in a water bill. I know. But y'all gave NHS $11 million unforgivable loan. You ain't saying nothing about that. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Bailey. The next speaker is Mr. Mark Carter. Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> you know, I hear this talk of violence going on across the city and we kind of get it mixed up. We blame it on the people on the ground. But we never look at nepotism, cronyism, and patronage. And because of nepotism, cronyism, and patronage, young people in this city can't get jobs, contracts, and opportunities. Because all the opportunities go to these special interest people that you all are voting for. These special interest contracts that are 
coming out, the police academy. But y'all got Larry Huggins, people like Larry Huggins uh, uh, um, acting as a consultant, putting up no type of uh, uh, um, anything to be liable for the project. You got corrupt people like Burke, king of uh, corruption. Pat Dow. Pat Dow over the third ward who allowed her son's father to use the trouble building initiative where, where he sits as the attorney for neighborhood housing services yeah. and took all those older people homes over there. While she sat on the housing committee, sent the money to her son's father. You see? But, got, but you know what? Now that we're older, we're going to rise up. Two major oppositions. The unions and his immigration policy in this city. If you're going to give sanctuary to illegal immigrants, you're going to give sanctuary to people that have the served times for crime committed. And we're going to make you do it. We're going to raise so much hell, you're going to do it. And you're going you're gonna to do it because, and we're going to do it because we have no choice but to, do, to make you do it. We don't have nothing else to lose but our chain. When our young people don't go to work, they die and go to jail. That's, the, that's the, the alternative for not being able to go to work in this city. We haven't said anything in a few years. Y'all about to see us. You all are voting. We had to sue Chicago Housing Authority in order to enforce the HUD Act, Mayor. In order to for, enforce the HUD Act so low and very low income people can eat in accordance with the HUD Act in Section 3, we had to sue Chicago Housing Authority. Well, now it's time for us to sue the city of Chicago and everybody else that are getting the HUD funds, who are allowing the unions to control all the jobs and opportunities. See, we don't have no natural fear of these so-called gangsters in the unions. We come from the same thing they come from. We believe in the same bloodshed that they believe in. Fighting for opportunities for young men and women. I've been arrested almost 200 times. I didn't go to jail that many times when I was in the streets. But it seemed like to do right, they hate you more than you stood on the corners. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Your time has expired. The next speaker is Mr. Paul McKinley. Thank you very much. Mayor, ladies, gentlemen, and frenemies, for there are some enemies in this crowd. I'm, I belong to an ex-offender organization called Vote, and I see that we really can't get y'all attention. Y'all really not feeling us. No matter how many young men and women are murdered in our neighborhood, whether it's Inglewood, Roseland, Lindale, Austin, South side, west side. Seem like we can't get y'all attention unless we clown with you. So we're gonna have to raise the people up and come down here. Cause that's the only way you understand that black folks got a stake in Chicago. If black folks got 48% in Chicago, it's 48% of African Americans in Chicago, and 48% of all construction yeah. in these communities, we need to work for it. Not only is it 48%? That means 48% of the taxes we're paying. If we're paying 48% of the taxes, then anything is worked in our neighborhood, we should be able to work and make some money. But that's not happening. Mayor, you receive a lot of donations from the unions to keep quiet, to not say anything, to watch them work in your people, because you're one of us. Your people come from us. They were slaves just like my people was too. And you're under the same natural law our people are under. Your grandmama and great grandmamas were slaves like mine. So it's time for you to step up. You can take other coins, or you can proclaim other genders, you can do all that. But you're gonna deal with black folks. And you're gonna put black folks to work. I'm talking about black folk. Just like when you went down in the Latino community, you dealt with their issue. That was a good move. You showed the Latinos that I'm for you. There's nothing wrong with that. But now you're going to do something for black folk. 
Because you're one of us. You are people. Whether you like it or not, you belong to us. And so you're going to help black folks. Now, I didn't move over for Mayor Daly. And he was a gangster for real. And I wasn't trying to step aside for Ron Emanuel. And he went the same way in Scrace. Now, if we can work with the mayor to put our people to work, well, hey, we just have to clown and shut the town down. But our people are going to eat in this town. You're not chasing us out of Chicago. And specifically, you're not going to punish me or the people that I was with who stood on Laquan McDonald and sent Van Dyke to jail where he belonged. That's where he belonged. So I'm not making a veil threat. I'm saying black folks going to protest if we ain't eating. Thank you for your time, Mr. McKinley. The next speaker is Mr. Edmund Dante Hamilton. Uh, good morning, Mayor Lightfoot, um, council members, uh, city clerk, the citizens, and the press. Um, I'd like to uh, share a little bit of background about myself, and then I'd like to make my uh, comment. I'm Dante Hamilton. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. I grew up in uh, CMHA, which is uh, uh, Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority. Uh, however, I live here uh, in Chicago since 1990. Um, I have a business, and it's located uh, downtown here in Chicago. I've been there since uh, 1990. You may be familiar with the space, uh, Ms. Lightfoot. It's uh, 9 West Washington Street. You may have seen some of the Lightfoot for Chicago signs as you exit out of the conference room one day. Um, uh, so w the reason that I'm here today is because, uh, as you all may know, there's a Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act that was just passed and signed into law uh, June 20th. 25th uh, by the Governor Pritzker. It includes some groundbreaking social equity provisions. Uh, however, there's a lesser known piece of legislation called the Limited Cooperative Association Act, which becomes effective January 1st, 2020, as does the Cannabis Regulation Act. So what I'm here to say is, is that there should be a way in which the city, uh, the council members, DKs, can help people of color who look like you and me get a piece of the cannabis business enterprise that's getting ready to be a big business here in Chicago. I've come up with a solution that I think is a great idea, and that's to create a Chicago Cannabis Week, similar to like Lollapalooza and other events. That would be managed by a Illinois worker uh, cooperative that involves the residents and the people from the disproportionately impacted area of the south and west sides. They would have a ownership in this event, they would manage the event, and they would share in the profits of the event. I feel like this is something that could be done. It's modeled after the National Cannabis Festival in DC, uh, the European Cannabis Week, and Canadian Cannabis Week. I'd like to ask the support, and I know I'm not supposed to ask, but I feel that th there should be a way in which the city of Chicago could help people of color get into the cannabis business before it becomes big marijuana, which you've seen in the last couple of weeks through the media, buyouts in the millions, mega millions. We're not a part of that. And I feel that like Chicago Cannabis Week, even though it's an idea that I created, it should be something like that that the city supports to help people of color get into the business because the social equity provisions in the law provide for us to become a cannabis business entity. And that's just one idea, and I feel that the citizens of Chicago should be included, and we need to be inclusive in this. Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Hamilton. The next speaker is Rabbi Michael Ben Yosef. Shalom Aleichem. Peace and blessings to the world and those who stand in need of prayer. Mayor Lightfoot, I need your undivided attention for this short moment. My name is Rabbi Michael Ben Yosef, President of Tukun Kai International. I'm here on behalf of the 75 murders, the women who have been killed in our city. And there has not been a not one investigation. Uh -uh, I need your undivided attention, Mayor Lightfoot. I need your undivided attention. Sir, proceed with your statement. I'm, I'm here. You don't, stand there as, you don't stand there as a man 
and tell me what to do when I was actually getting my notebook to take some notes. So you want to talk? Talk. You're wasting your time. But well, don't ever, ever tell me what to do when I'm standing here conducting the business of the people. I apologize, you Mayor, that, but there's, I apologize, Mayor, but there are families who are mourning, who are grieving, who will need justice for their families. And I'm here on their behalf because you have failed. You sat here and said you're concerned about the families and you have not launched an investigation and have not called out the, the serial killer that's in our city. You have not put forth an investigation and called an FBI into this city to deliver a message of truth for our people. Right now in Ohio, right now, has a serial killer right now, they have already launched an investigation and you sit there in your seat and have not lost an investigation, have used your puppet, Eddie Johnson, has said that there is no evidence when we have a murder accountability project that says that there's actual situations and proof that strangulation, that those women who are found in alleys who are sitting here killed and there has not been any sense of urgency for our people. And I'm here for the people and you need to understand what it's about our people. It must be heard. You must be accountable for the actions you're standing here for. Thank you, Rabbi Ben Yosef. The next speaker is Ms. Gina Stamps. The next speaker is Ms. Juana Stamps. Good morning, members of City Hall. The correct pronunci pronunciation of my name is Juana. Um, I know you've heard a, heard a lot this morning, and I just came to let you know that the west side of Chicago, my organization, Chemio, has merged with uh, another non-for-profit organization, ABT. And I want to thank Alderman Kaplan for uh, working with us to help design a proposal or a document that we would like to present to you on what we would like to do on the west side of Chicago as it relates to youth and young adults. Today, um, I brought with me one of the young people who, oh, thank you, I'm sorry. One of the young people who's a part of the project uh, that we're doing, and it's to, we're trying to reach out to the at-risk youth. The only way we can do that is to be out in the community. We do need the resources, however, our commitment is better than us just waiting for the resources, and that's why we've already started our program. We have 15 young people engaged in our program, and the program is to help build lives and to save lives. And I just want you to know that I'm standing true to my commitment that you are not in this by yourself, and it will not be overnight that the work gets done, and I commend you for the work you have already done. So thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, and all the McCaffrey. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Stamps. The next speaker is Pat Murray. I'm uh, here to talk about the police board hearing that I went to uh, last Thursday. Uh, I knew walking in that those police officers had no chance of getting their jobs back. Um, this is a politically put together forum that was put together by the last mayor. And as a result of that, I knew that there was no chance. But let me just talk about the mayor. The problems that occurred with this case occurred on the fifth floor. They were concealed from the beginning and just made this worse and worse. And these officers took the brunt of it. They did their jobs. They responded to that call and they did their jobs the way that they were. The code of silence, like I said, started upstairs. These police officers, let's talk about them. Four police officers, one's a sergeant, three POs. They served the city of Chicago for 70 years. In 70 years, 
They had 177 honorable mentions, two department combinations, nine physical fitness awards. They had uh, 13 other awards for attendance. They had one sustained CR number for a lost radio and 70 years of police work. They came to work every day. They're pillars of their society. Now what happens to them? What happens to these people? They're fired. They can't get their credentials. They're not going to be able to work and do what they want. This stigma is going to follow them forever. We are going to fight this. Okay? If this was in front of a judge like Dominica Stevenson, she scolded the special prosecutor for bringing that la last case in front of her and said, this, this is actually a joke. All right? Nobody worked together to take and form a conspiracy. Mayor, I heard you say yesterday basically that stronger and safer, stronger and safer police officers. Police officers across the city are looking at this message that was sent out by this board that, you know what, if you're going to respond to a scene, there's a good chance you're going to get fired if, if you're not backed up. Uh, this is sending a negative message, and we are going to fight this because, you know, we need to fight this because these officers did nothing wrong. Finally, finally, thank you. Finally, the exempt members that were involved in this, they were exempt from prosecution, discipline, and a lot of them just took their pensions and walked away. Uh, we are here as, as to stand behind our police officers, and that's why I'm here today to talk about this. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate your support. Thank you, Mr. Murray. The next speaker is J.L. Gross. Good afternoon, City Council and the Mayor. Um, on the one hand, I got to be honest, I'm an angry black man. On the one hand, I'm an angry black man. But I'm angry at the city of Chicago. Culture. And, and this goes out to the city of Chicago, not just aldermen and the mayor. We can't seem to get our act together when it comes to racism and classism in this city. And that's problematic, very problematic for me, and that's, that's what I'm angry about. You know, everybody wants to point the finger at everybody else and say they're the problem. That's not the problem. But I'm primarily here to speak about the disenfranchised people. Uh, I represent LSNA, and I'm a member of Logan Square Neighborhood Association, and I'm a member of Chicago Housing Initiative. In fact, I'm their president. I'm, about, I, I'm all about getting people and families homes, apartments. These people need this severely. And, 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 and my message to the Black Caucus, man, is you guys need to get up and straighten up your act and get on board. Really, we need you to help us pass an ordinance called One Chicago. Chicago for all. Uh, One Home Chicago is really the name of the uh, thing. But I've been, I've been at this for the last 10 years. Um, and I, it pains me that I come before this august body and, and I speak all the time about the needs of the people of Chicago. People need places to stay, not up under bridges, not up under, up under Wacker Drive. We need fair housing. Martin Luther King came here 50 years ago to ask for fair housing, and we're still dealing with it. That's wrong, man. I mean, you know, I, I am, I, listen, I'm, I'm an I'm a, I'm a ex-Marine. I'm, I'm, I'm a combat veteran who fought for this country and this city. I love this country. I love this city. But it has not given me back what I gave to this country and this city. And, and I'm a, you know, I, I don't ask nothing for myself. But there are a lot of disenfranchised people who need a place to stay. And, 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 and you, guys are, are, you guys need to get on board. I, Alderman, the mayor, the city, we have people who need help. And I'm pleading for that help. Uh, I, I apologize for... for I'm just hurt by it. I'm just hurt by the, by the, by this whole thing that I, 
we come we thank you sir thank you mr gross the time allotted for comment has expired this concludes the public comment period resolutions Congratulations extended to Simbi, Jimbrel, Shawnee Davis, and Megan Stats for heroic, heroic actions. A resolution for, from Her Honor the Mayor, Alderman O'Shea, Alderman Mitchell, and Alderman Talaferro. Whereas on June 12, 2019, Simbi Jimbrel, a second grade student at Adam Clayton Powell Elementary School on Chicago's South Side, was in the kitchen with her mother, Shawnee Davis, when the unthinkable happened. Miss Davis began experiencing chest pain and collapsed on the kitchen floor. And whereas six-year-old Simbi knew exactly what to do, she immediately dialed city's 911 emergency telephone number to request help for her mother. And whereas fire call taker Megan Stats, a licensed paramedic for eight years, answered Simbi's call. Realizing something really was wrong, Ms. Stats asked Simbi to check whether her mother was breathing. After learning that Ms. Davis was not breathing, Ms. Stats first told Simbi to keep pressing on her mother's chest, then begin to elicit information from the child about where to send help. And whereas following Ms. Stats' instruction to the letter, Simbi clearly and confidently provided her mother's name, telephone number, address, and door number, as well as the building entry code needed for first responders to access their apartment on the 19th floor. And she kept pushing on her mother's chest until thankfully her mother breathing was restored. And whereas while paramedics, paramedics rushed to the scene, Ms. Stats kept Simbi on the telephone, reassuring that help was on the way, then soothing her by asking about her age and her favorite subjects at school. Meanwhile, as met at Ms. Stats' suggestion, suggestion, Simbi collected her mother's telephone, clothes, purse, house keys, and identification to give the first responders when they arrived at the door. And whereas thanks to the wise decisions and concerted efforts at different times of many different people, this potentially tragic story has a happy ending, for Ms. Davis recovered and is doing well. And whereas six-year-old Simbi is the hero of the day, everyone is amazed that such a young child would have presence of mind to call 911 for help and administer life-saving chest compressions to her mother and to provide Ms. Stats with de detailed information about her mother's condition and location. Simbi deserves special recognition for studying hard and listening so closely to her teachers and mentors at school. She learned about calling 911 from a CAPS officer during a school presentation. And whereas uh, exemplary mother and, role mother and role model, Ms. Davis deserves kudos for working with Simbi to ensure that she mastered critical information such as her name, address, and telephone number and acquired other important basic skills. Ms. Davis' selfless efforts to teach Simbi was amply rewarded and ultimately served to save Ms. Davis's life. And whereas the professionalism and compassion shown by fire call taker Megan Stats when shepherding six-year-old Simbi through the most difficult 10 minutes imaginable is a testament to Ms. Stats' superior training, sensitivity, and dedication to her job. Ms. D Stats who exemplifies the skill, empathy, and hard work for our 911 call takers and dispatchers will be sorely missed at OEMC when she embarks this month on her new career as a Chicago firefighter. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the mayor, and members of the City Council of the City of Chicago, assembled the 24th day of July, 2019, do hereby honor and commend Simbi, Jimbrel, Shawnee Davis, and Megan Stats for their contributions in saving Miss Davis's life and better be it further resolved that suitable copies of this resolution be presented to Simbi, Jimbrel, Johnny Davis, and Megan Stats and placed on permanent record in Megan Stats' personal file as a token of our appreciation and esteem. Alderman Mitchell. The President, I, uh, I am proud to be associated with this resolution. How many times do you hear of a young seven-year-old changing the life, saving the life? So, wait, Alderman Mitchell, do you want to uh, move to make for a temporary oh, yeah. suspension of the rules? Myself. I'm so proud of her. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> so your motion is a uh, temporary suspension of the rules for immediate consideration of the resolution? Mr. President, I move for temporary suspension of the rules for the immediate consideration of the resolution. Hearing no objections, so ordered. <laughs> now, Alderman Mitchell. <laughs> oh. So once again, 
How many times do we see a seven-year-old that saved the life of the woman that gave her life? This is, a, I'm proud to be associated with this resolution. All too many times we hear about things in the press that our kids are doing wrong. But look what we have now. She had the presence of mind, the maturity um, to, to, uh, to uh, call and work with 911, and I'm extremely proud of that. And special uh, 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 kudos go out to the parents because, and the principal and, and cats because it takes a village. And our village seems like it's been very successful over there. So thank you. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Alderman O'Shea. Thank you, Madam President. I too stand in support of this resolution. Simbi, you are a hero. <laughs> Everything worked perfect that day. We had an emergency. This young girl, an exemplary student at Adam Clayton Powell, knew what to do, knew how to handle it, and how lucky are we that on the other end of that phone call was a dedicated call taker from OEMC. That's right. If you talk to first responders or call takers at OEMC, oftentimes this doesn't happen. Oftentimes someone involved in this scenario isn't prepared, isn't trained. But this worked out, which brings us all here together today. Cindy, you are a hero. And Megan, you are a hero also. Now a little bit about Megan. She grew up on the northwest side. And then she got smart and she moved south. <laughs> I'm proud to say that she's a resident of the fighting 19th Ward. I'm proud to say that she is a Chicago White Sox fan. <laughs> her father served as a Chicago firefighter. Her mother served as a paramedic. Mark is here with her today, also a paramedic, and little Jimmy. Jimmy, who is far too young to know all that is going on today, but <laughs> you, young man, have a mother who's a hero. Johnny, I'm so glad that we are all here together today because of your wonderful daughter. Thank you. Okay. The chair recognizes Alderman Moore. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I stand in support of this resolution. Um, not only this young lady is a hero, she's also good at taking your money because she's so smart. Um, and I asked her what is her favorite subjects, and she said math, and just like I do in my schools, I give students a little test, and she didn't even use her fingers, and she was rolling the numbers off. So when you do that, you get blessed. So you guys give her a hand for being a smart young lady. Uh, without a lot of time, I just want to echo everything that my colleagues have said. But for the time's sake, parents, um, her mom and dad are here. Um, you guys just, that's a testament to your parentage, both of you, and what you do um, for your, um, what you did for your daughter here and taught her that. But for her to stay cool, but as um, Alderman O'Shea pointed out, and we've seen it on many times, um, Miss. Um, OMC, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Megan, um, many times you all heard when kids call the phone, somebody on the line to say, stop playing on the phone and hang up. Yeah. Megan, that was a big deal that you knew and took your time to listen to that um, young lady. And she had evidently articulated herself yeah. well enough that allowed you to want to listen to her to help save her mother. So congratulations and thank you. And I want to thank all her family and friends who came out to support her, because that takes a village to show that type of love for someone. So um, Simbi, keep doing what you do. We're proud of you. And uh, we look forward to seeing good things, more better things from you in the future. Thank you. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Taliaferro. in support of this resolution. Uh, Simbi, I just want to, Simbi, I can't see you over there. How are you doing, Simbi? <laughs> Simbi, I just want to say you are very, very brave. And you were, you were very courageous to help save your mom's life. You are not only a hero to us, 
but you are a hero to your mom. You are a hero to your family. Thank you so much for being there to help your mom. You did exactly <laughs> what your mom and dad taught you when there's an, and she's yawning on my speech too. <laughs> That's not the first time though. But you did exactly what your mom and dad taught you. So thank you so much. And, and to the 911 operator, Ms. Stats, thank you. I heard a part of the, uh, the dispatched call and you were so, so brave as well and calm under pressure. And I, I love what you asked Cindy. You asked her what she wanted to do in the future. All part why all of this was going on and she said, I want to be a police officer. You stole my heart right then because I'm a 23 year veteran of the police department. So thank you so much for all. And I know, I know Ms. Davis is very, very proud of you and your dad's very proud, but you sit here today because of your daughter. And as uh, one of my colleagues says, she sits here today because of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Wagus back. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you to the uh, fire call taker, Ms. Stotts. Um, you know, we hope that when you're serving the whole city like this, uh, the, the response from every call taker is the same. And I know it is because we've listened over the years to OEMC about the training that you get and how you need to respond to people. And there's been times when there's, you know, difficult situations like this, but um, it just proves that all the training that you're getting and, and the, the way you respond is, is the best that you can do for our city. Um, to Simbi's mom and dad, I have a six and seven year old. And, um, you know, Simbi, I was talking to them about this last night, this story, and they kept asking questions. What did she do? What did she do next? Then what did she do? And what was the operator saying? And we try to teach our kids how to respond in these situations. You never know what's gonna happen. But uh, Simbi, I, I can't say enough about um, what you did for your parents, what you did for all of us here, and what you do for my kids by teaching them a lesson here about how they can respond. And I'm gonna go home tonight and talk to them again, and maybe I can get a selfie with you later on. <laughs> uh, it would be great uh, to see you someday being an OEMC operator and helping another future child out there. Thank you very much for your work. Thank you, Madam President. The chair recognizes Alderman Hairston. Thank you, Madam President. I, too, rise uh, in support of this resolution. Uh, Simbi, you are fabulous. <laughs> um, you epitomize uh, what, what a very strong young lady looks like. Um, you are poised. You are cool under pressure. You know what to do. You listen. You pay attention. And I think you should be applauded from that. I am so proud of you and what you did. And so I just want to say congratulations to you. And I noticed that you have the princess wave down. So <laughs> I'm expecting great things from you. Congratulations. Uh, the chair recognizes uh, Alderman Napolitano, who is going to try to redeem the northwest side that was dispersed by uh, Alderman O'Shea. Thank you, Madam President. I know you saw that coming. Um, to Simbi, um, just take a look behind you and look at the smiles of this panel. What you've done is, is you, kept, you kept a family happy and kept a family alive. And it's not just the smiles, it's the tears. And as a father of three children, two of them girls in a house where girls rule and boys drool, um, you are an inspiration. You're an inspiration to my daughters. Congratulations. Um, this is terrific. And, and to Megan, uh, and to Alderman O'Shea as well, I think everything comes to your grassroots and where you're brought up. And I could tell those smarts that you had uh, on the line came from the strong 41st Ward on the Northwest side. Uh, and and I, we're proud to say uh, that you were one of ours as well. But congratulations to that entire panel. Your smiles actually give me chills, and this is what this is all about. Terrific, terrific resolution. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Let me also just er add my, uh, my comments. I had the opportunity to meet with Simbi and her family and also uh, fire, taker, fire call taker Megan Stotts. And I think Alderman Moore's point is well taken. Uh, it shows that she's very well trained. 
to hang in there and realize that a child calling actually is signaling an emergency. So she really ought to be commended. Um, and then walking through and talking to young Simbi in a way that she can understand and actually help her mother is really tremendous and I think shows off the great training um, of, at OEMC, which of course I'm partial to since I spent a little bit of time there. But thank you all and thanks for bringing this resolution forward. Resolutions? No, no. Congratulations extended to the Red Summer on 100th anniversary. A resolution from her honor, the mayor, Alderman King, Alderman Dow, and Alderman Irvin. Whereas 2019 marks the 100th anniversary of Red Summer, a shameful event that saw the murder and injury of hundreds of peoples and people in race riots across the United States, some of the worst which were occurred in the city of Chicago. And whereas competition for jobs and housing at the end of World War I led to a host of social and economic problems that fed into already simmering racial tensions. Madam, Madam Clerk, please can we have quiet in the chamber? Whereas in Chicago, those tensions boiled over with the murder of African-American youth who, while seeking relief in Lake Michigan during a heat wave, drifted a beach near 29th Street and was informally, which, that was informally segregated for whites only. And whereas that youth, Eugene Williams, was floating on a raft with others when he was struck in the head by a stone thrown by a white man standing on a breakwater. Williams lost his grip on the raft and drowned. A white police officer refused to arrest the white man who threw the stone and instead arrested an African-American man. When African Americans objected to this injustice, they were attacked by white beachgoers. And whereas this incident's violence quickly spread beyond the beach and throughout the city, acts of violence took place, including rioting, vandalism, and arson, with the rioters even taking measures to slow or block the rival fire department and other emergency responders. And whereas rioting took place as far as north as the loop, but mostly occurred in predominantly African American neighborhoods, which hundreds of homes and businesses were damaged or destroyed. And whereas the violence continually nearly unchecked, it continue, continue nearly unchecked as it was not until the Illinois National Guard became involved that it was brought under control. And whereas between July 27th and August 3rd, there were 38 deaths directly attributed to the rioting and another 537 people were injured. The majority of the casualties were African Americans, including one African American policeman. And whereas more than 1,000 residents were left homeless as a result of arson and other vandalism, the majority of whom were African American. Businesses were destroyed and other businesses locked African-American employees out because they feared a resurgence of violence. Rather than remain and rebuild, many African-Americans fled the city never to return. Whereas Red Summer is a time in our history that, while painful, represents an oppor opportunity to learn and grow as a, city, as a city. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the mayor, members of the city council of the city of Chicago, 
assembled this 24th day of July, 2019, do hereby commemorate the occasion of the 100th anniversary of Red Summer, and be it further resolved that we call upon Chicagoans to continue to work, put aside the racial, ethnic, and economic divisions that gave rise to Red Summer, and come together as one city that promotes the well-being of all. The chair recognizes Alderman Dow. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And members of the City Council, I rise in support of this resolution commemorating the 100th anniversary of Red Summer. Uh, Mayor, I want to thank you for bringing forth this important resolution because I believe now, as much as ever, it's important that we heighten awareness of the 1919 race riots. The racism exhibited then has sadly not been eradicated. While the violence of Red Summer swept the entire nation, its roots began in Chicago with the horrible killing of Eugene Williams, killed for the crime of drifting from the 31st Street beat into the informally segregated 29th Street beat. This heinous murder led to citywide riots that claimed the lives of 38 people, injured 537, and displaced over 1,000 residents and destroyed countless African-American businesses. Yet despite this tragedy, hardly anyone knows about the race riots of 1919. It's not taught in our schools. It hasn't received the Hollywood movie treatment. And because of that, many of the underlying issues, racism, inequity, mistrust, that led to that summer are still prevalent in our society today. That is why it is so important that we highlight the Red Summer with this resolution. We must move forward as a society, and to do so, we have to learn from the past and discuss racism in this country. There are a host of Red Summer activities going on this week. In the third ward on this Saturday, there's a bike tour led by Go Bronzeville through Bronzeville and Bridgeport to explore the places where violence broke out. And community groups are holding important discussions on this event, including ones hosted by architecture journalist Lee Bay, Chicago journalist and author Natalie Moore, history, history professor Peter Cole, Good Kids Mad City, and the Red Clay Dance Company. Despite the horrific violence, the silver lining was that the Red Summer led to the strengthening of an organizations like the NAACP, and birthed an entire generation of civil rights leaders that eventually made historic gains for African Americans across this country. Hopefully, by remembering this event today, we can have the same galvanizing impact for a new generation of African Americans moving forward as it had on the people that lived through it in 1919. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Alderman Dow. Um, I just want to add to um, your comments that we will be sponsoring an official city remembrance of this event on the 29th. Um, more details will follow um, later today. Thank you. Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I move adoption of the foregoing resolutions in the omnibus. Hearing no objections, so ordered. And now move, we return to the regular order of business. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Communications? A series of communications for honor the mayor to the honorable the city council of the city of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the city comptroller, I transmit here with an ordinance amending various provisions of municipal code regarding Fines, fees, and payment plans. For favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Verily, truly yours. Lori E. Lightfoot, Mayor, refer to the Committee on Finance. At the request of the com ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the com Commissioner of Aviation, I transmit here with it together with Alderman O'Shea an or ordinance authorizing the execution of concession, lease, and lease agreement with clear regarding biometric screening. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours. Lori E. Lightfoot, Mayor, refer to the Committee on Aviation. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Aviation transmit here with an ordinance authorizing an amendment to ground lease of O'Hare International Airport with Area O'Hare Express LLC. 
Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated yours. We're very truly yours, Lori Elite for Mayor, for the Committee on Aviation. Ladies and gentlemen, with the request of the Budget Director, I transmit with here a Fund 925 amendment. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours. Lori Lightfoot made for rate mayor refer to the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, with the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with the ordinance authorizing Class C tax status for property located at 2745 West Roscoe. Favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot Mayor for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Corporation Council, I transmit here with the ordinance amending Chapter 256, Municipal Code regarding, regarding conditions for release of reports. For favorable consideration of this ordinance, I be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot Mayor for the Committee on Ethics and Government Oversight. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Housing, I transmit here an ordinance authorizing allocation of affordable housing opportunity funds for affordable ownership and housing program pilot. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot Mayor for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Fleet and Facility Management I transmit here an ordinance authorizing the execution of a sublease agreement for property located in 1111 Southwestern Avenue. In favor of consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Transportation I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing amendments to previously executed agreements with various railroads in Chicago Park District regarding the Wells Wentworth Court Connector. Your favor of consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Transportation, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing acquisition of property on portions of West Clarence Avenue. Favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here an ordinance authorizing the sale of city owned property. Favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with ordinances authorizing, mm -hmm. authorizing the expenditure of open space impact fee funds. Favorable consideration of these ordinances will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Special Events, Cultural Affairs, and Recreation. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here it together with Alderman Burnett, an ordinance amending the Kinsey Industrial Corridor. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Ladies and gentlemen, I've appointed Rishma Soni as City Comptroller. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here, here with appointments to the Chicago Public Library Board. Your favorable consideration of these appointments will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here, here with appointments to various special service areas. Your favorable consideration of these appointments are appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here appointments on Board of Trustees of Community College District Number 508. Your favorable consideration of these appointments will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Education and Child Development. Ladies and gentlemen, I, hear, I transmit here with appointments to Chicago Police Board. Your favorable consideration of these appointments will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Public Safety. Ladies and gentlemen, I appoint, have appointed Jose Munoz as Commissioner of the Chicago Park District for a term effective immediately and expiring April 25th, 2020, to complete the unexpired term of Jesse Ruiz, who has resigned. Your favorable consideration of this appointment will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot. Refer to the Committee on Special Events, Cultural Affairs, and Recreation. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here with appointments to the Chicago Plan Commission. Your favorable consideration of these appointments will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. Refer to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here with appointments to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Your favorable consideration of these appointments will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot. Refer to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. I, City Clerk Anna Valencia, hereby inform the City Council that the following documents were filed in my office relating to the respective subjects designated as follows. Certification of City Funding Requirement for Laborers and Retirement Board Employees Annuity and Benefit Fund of Chicago for Tax Levy Year 2020 Payment Year 2021. Civilian Office of Police Accountability Quarterly Report for Peer Period ended June 30, 2019. Chicago Transit Authority Annual Ride Hailing Fee Report regarding use of proceeds to fund infrastructure improvements. Office of Inspector General's Advisory Report Concerning Inequities in Chicago's Residential Street Infrastructure Management, Office of Inspector General's Audit Report of Chicago Department of Transportation's Billing Process for Commercial Driveway Permit, Annual Fees, Office of Inspector General's Public Safety Section Follow-Up Inquiry, the September 2018 Review of Chicago Police Department's Manager of School Resource Officers, Office of Inspector General's Quarterly Report for Period Ended June 30, 2019, and Comprehensive Annual Financial Report of Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, Year 2018.
I, City Clerk Anna Valencia, also informed the City Council that those matters which were considered by the City Council at the inaugural meeting held on June 12, 2019, which were required to statu by statute to be published in book or pamphlet form or in one or more newspapers were published in pamphlet form on June, July 24, 2019 by being fully printed in full text and printed pamphlet copies of the Journal of the Proceedings of the City of Sh Council of the City of Chicago. I also transmit here with the following miscellaneous communications and reports requiring City Council action, zoning recalification reclassifications of particular areas which are referred to the Committee on Zoning Landmarks and Building standard, Standards, and claims against the City of Chicago which are referred to the Committee on Finance, and correction of December 14, 2016 City Council Journal Proceedings which is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Prohibition of single-use styrofoam containers from streetcars and restaurants which is referred to the Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy, Historical landmark designation for former Lyman Trumbull Public High School building at 5200 North Ashland Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, and demolish of historical landmark building of 1041 West Fault Market 232 North Carpenter Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. The Chair recognizes Alderman Spazzato. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to temporarily suspend the rules. I want to bring notice to something that I don't believe most of my colleagues know about, and tomorrow is Pablo's last day. So I just want to make sure everybody knows they can say goodbye to Pablo today, and I want to publicly state I appreciate all he's done in the short time he's been here. He's a fine young man, and I wish you the best wishes. And I'm embarrassed to say, Pablo, Pablo, I don't even know your last name all the, all the time I've been working with you. <laughs> Everybody just knows you as Pablo. So. <laughs> but thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Madam President. If anybody else has anything to say, I'd appreciate giving them that opportunity. The chair recognizes Alderman Scott. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. Diego. Uh, I'd, I'd like to first thank uh, Alderman Spazzato for bringing this to uh, the body's attention. Uh, Pablo, I want to say thank you for, uh, you haven't been here for a long time, but in the short time that you have been here, uh, I have grown very fond of you, your work ethic, and what you've done. Uh, wish you nothing but the best in, in your next endeavors. Uh, and if you uh, ever need anything from me, and I'm sure a, a lot of the members of my, my, uh, the body and my colleagues feel the same, if you ever need anything from us, Please don't hesitate uh, to call, but I will be calling you because I know where you're going and I'll be looking to, uh, for, your, for your help. Thank you, Madam President. I, I will make sure that Pablo regularly asks you for things. <laughs> the chair recognizes Alderman Napolitano. Thank you, Madam President. I too rise in support of this. Uh, Pablo, what a dynamic person to work with. Always had a smile no matter how bad a situation was. Um, extremely quick in responses. You are going to be an absolute benefit to whoever. Uh, or to wherever you go. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you, and thank you for doing this as well, Madam President. Thank you. The chair recognizes Ottoman Villegas. Thank you, Madam President. I also stand in support of this, not even resolution, but acknowledgement. Uh, the mayor's office has, has had some really great talent come through their IGA department, and it's a shame that we're losing Pablo, but it's good for him that he's going to be landing in the private sector uh, and really being compensated for the talent that he brings. I just wanted to give him a shout out. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman O'Shea. Thank you, Madam President. Pablo David, the man with two first names. Uh, I just wanted to say it was, uh, it was always good to work with you. You were always very responsive, very helpful, and he had a great, great sense of humor. Um, I look forward to hearing about your next endeavor. Uh, best of luck to you, pal. Appreciate all the help. The chair recognizes Alderman Harris. Madam President, I too rise to say, Pablo, you know that I love you. It's been fantastic working with you. Uh, I think you're going to be tremendous wherever you go in the private sector. And I know where you're going, but I ain't. But um, mm -hmm. we're going to miss you. So Godspeed. God bless you. The chair recognizes Alderman Garza. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, too, rise um, to congratulate Pablo on his new endeavor. Whoever's getting you is a, a very, very lucky person. 
Um, we've never met. You've, you, you're right. You're always smiling. You're always kind and compassionate. We've never met until you step foot into City Hall. But lo and behold, we have mutual friends that we just recently found out about. So I wish you luck. And if you need anything, don't hesitate to call. The chair recognizes Alderman Thompson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Pablo, I too rise in support of uh, what my colleagues are saying and wish you all the best. Your, uh, your credit to your family, your integrity. Um, you're a terrific worker and I know you'll do well in whatever you do. And I wanna thank you on behalf of the residents of the 11th Ward for what you've been able to do working with me. You must've gotten the short straw that you drew me, but we work together and I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you. Chair recognizes uh, Alderman Moore. Thank you and support of this recognition. And of course, anybody with David in their name has got to be awesome, right? Uh, Pablo, uh, I already spoke to you privately, be publicly. Um, I hope other people have watched you because I see it from the time that you um, came in. There's a balance um, between um, working for um, the mayor's administration, making sure that the policies of the mayor um, get presented to the council, and then that balance between what the council want and how you do that uh, with. Um, both respect to the council, but yet being able to stay committed to uh, what the mayor's mission is. And you um, were able to balance that with great respect, and I appreciate it. I can't I always say that about everybody that I've worked with my past four years, but you came in um, um, just almost acting like you were an expert at this already and knowing how to work with people. And for that, I am grateful for it, and I just um, wish you well on um, all your endeavors. And yes, we're um, losing a great asset um, um, to this um, council uh, and working with you. So um, good luck and I appreciate you. Thank you, Madam President. Chair recognizes Alderman Harris. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too want to rise to say congratulations. Um, I, you're gonna have a hard time not talking to anybody in the evening about work. Um, after hours, I think you were like the number one person that I talked to after hours about work. Um, so, but it has been a pleasure working with you. I wish you all the best and you know I'm here if you need me. Thank you. The chair recognizes uh, Alderman Signo Lopez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, Pablo, wanna, as a freshman Alderman, I gotta say it was being a uh, pleasure working with you. Uh, someone uh, who's learning, who's uh, on the second month in the job, I, I really appreciate you taking those, you know, those late calls and uh, being responsive in the emails, uh, especially when, uh, when you know, there's some, some of those things as freshman aldermen, we're just getting familiarized and be patient. We really appreciate all the support for the 25th Ward. We had many uh, big projects right off the bat, and we're really instrumental in, in dealing with that in a, in a timely fashion. So thank you, wishing you the best, and uh, I really appreciate all the, all the support. Thank you. The chair recognizes Alderman Austin. Thank you, Madam President. I too rise to uh, salute you, Pablo. Uh, you have been an I echo the facts of what Alderman Moore was saying, but you're an individual that you can sit down and talk with and get a resolution on whatever your concerns are. And I'm grateful for you for being able to sit down and talk with you on many matters that I have before me. All right, now, and congratulations and the best of luck. Thank you, Madam President. The chair recognizes Alderman La Spada. Pablo, uh, yeah, I just have to thank you so much and particularly echo Alderman Sector Lopez's statement as someone that a lot of us who are in this for the first two months, figuring this all out for the first time, the way you open doors and open relationships and help us learn the ropes, particularly on some of the thorny development and transportation issues we've been dealing with, the rooms that you convened for us, the solutions that we work towards, I have been so grateful. And I hope whoever comes after you brings forward the same work ethic and really the same spirit of collaboration. Thank you so much. The chair recognizes uh, Alderman Dow. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Pablo, I wish you the best as you move forward in a new career path. Um, the fact that you've been here a minute, but being celebrated like you've been here 30 years <laughs> is not lost upon us all and should not be lost upon you. You've had a tremendous impact on us and you know how to move in this, this arena and this circle. 
Um, you've been an asset to the city of Chicago. God bless you. The chair recognizes Alderman Beal. Thank you, Madam President. I too rise to support this resolution to my man Pablo. You know, every time I saw him, that's exactly what I would always say. I say, my man Pablo. Let me just say, Pablo, I'm really, really happy for you. Uh, you have a very bright future ahead of you. Uh, you're smart, you're articulate, you're a hard worker, man. And let me just say, your star is so bright, and I'm just extremely happy for you. Best of luck. Always remember, we're here for you. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Raboyos. Pablo, thank you so much for being the person that you are. You come from good stock, and uh, you're very personable. You're, you know how to reach us, and um, that will be missed. And uh, you have a, a, a f good future ahead of you, young, young man, and you're very bright. And thank you for everything that you did for us. Appreciate you. Chair recognizes Alderman Riley. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Pablo, I, I echo what everyone else has said. I, I think you've done a tremendous job. You deal with 50 very difficult personalities here every day. Um, you've had some tough situations with a number of us, and you've always handled it with grace and professionalism, and I know you're going to do a great job in your next gig. Um, so congratulations. It's really been a pleasure working with you. Uh, when I interviewed you for a job in my office, I should have hired you then. Uh, but I know you're going to do great out there, and uh, please do stay in touch. All right. The chair recognizes Alderman King. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, I'm supposed to state this first. Beg leave of the body for the opportunity to add a few comments about the uh, 1919 race riots. Uh, myself and uh, Alderman Irvin uh, would like to add a few words. Sorry, I missed that opportunity earlier, but I think it's. It's just uh, too important of a commemoration to let go by. Uh, first of all, uh, on Madam second. President. Well, hold on one second. Oh, Here, sorry. Any objection? So ordered. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, truly uh, thank you for your leadership here, Madam President. Um, there are so many examples in our history uh, in Chicago of, of sanctioned racism, of violence uh, that need not only to be acknowledged, uh, but we need to take steps to amend the wrongs um, because they've left lasting negative imprints on our city. Um, and I appreciate um, the uh, event that you're going to have on Monday and the events that are going on this Saturday, which is actually the 100th year anniversary of the 1990 race riots. Um, as I said, it's left, a, left kind of a lasting impression on us. This event actually happened at the 31st Street Beach where a number of us go uh, to enjoy. Um, as Alderman Dow pointed out, um, a young African-American male, he was 17 years old at the time, his name uh, was Eugene Williams. Um, he lost his life after he was stoned to death by um, white, uh, beachgoers uh, when he passed an imaginary uh, line uh, border. Um, and this beach is now called Margaret Burroughs Beach or 31st Beach Street Beach and Harbor as we all know it. Um, but that day led to a week of rioting uh, where 38 people lost their lives. Uh, we call it the Red Summer in the United States. Uh, Chicago actually um, had the most deaths and injuries, uh, where hundreds of people were injured, um, and over a thousand homes were lost. Uh, so, you know, I really just wanted to take a moment uh, for us all to reflect on where we've come, uh, why uh, this particular point in time um, is actually still imprinted on our memories, uh, probably because there was, after this incident, the police you know, didn't uh, seek to arrest the white man who threw stones at the black gentleman, our young boy who died, but uh, indeed arrested black people on the scene, and it started a lot of race riots uh, there. So I just think it's important for us to acknowledge uh, this time in history. It's our 100th year anniversary. As Alderman Dow indicated, there are a number of things going on. 
on, on that Saturday to commemorate this event. I know, Mayor, you're having an event on Monday to also commemorate the event. Um, and I just, again, want to thank you for your leadership and for us all to think about uh, how the race riots of 1990, 1919 still impact us 100 years later. Um, so thank you, Madam uh, President. Alderman Irvin. Thank you, Madam President. Um, it's interesting, 100 years later, we, we, we're somewhat having the same conversation. Um, we're still talking about jobs, still talking about housing, we're still talking about opportunity. Uh, while we commemorate this uh, tragic event, we need to think about the significance of what it was about and how we can correct and, and fix the reasons it happened. I'm very happy to see that we are trying to make stride in the direction of equality. I'm, I want to say I want to say equality. I want to say equity, equity. And let's be clear that we're looking for equity in this conversation. So let's not forget the tragedy of the past, but let's not keep it a tragedy moving forward. Thank you, Alderman Spazzato. Excuse me. Thank you, Madam President. Once, just want to thank you for the opportunity for me and my colleagues to recognize Pablo. So once again, thank you, Pablo. I'm not so sure everybody got a chance to speak that wanted to speak, but thank you very much for this opportunity to suspend the rules. And Pablo, once again, best wishes to you. God bless you. All right, uh, unless there's something else, we're going to move on to committee reports. Finance, Alderman Wagespeck. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, reporting for the City Council's Committee on Finance, which met July 24, 2019, item number one on the agenda is an ordinance concerning the authority to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Board of Education for the redevelopment of Philip Rogers Elementary School in the 50th Ward. The item was approved by the committee by voice vote, and if no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move, to, uh, I move for uh, concur with the committee recommendation by roll call vote. The clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> Alderman La Spada. Alderman Hopkins. Alderman Dow, Alderman King, Alderman Harrison, Aye. Alderman Sawyer, Aye. Alderman Mitchell, Alderman Harris, Alderman Beal, Alderman Zalowski Garza, Alderman, I heard him, Alderman Thompson, Alderman Cardenas, Alderman Quinn, Alderman Burke, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Coleman, Alderman Moore, Alderman Curtis, Alderman O'Shea, Alderman Taylor, Alderman Brookins, Alderman Rodriguez, Alderman Tabaras, Alderman Scott, Alderman Cicho Lopez, Alderman Maldonado, Alderman Burnett, Alderman Irvin, Alderman Talaferro, Alderman Raboyas, Alderman Cardona, Alderman Wagaspak, Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez, Alderman Austin, Alderman Ramirez Rosa, Alderman Viegas, Alderman Mitt, Alderman Spasado, Alderman Nugent, Alderman Vasquez, Alderman Napolitano, Alderman Riley, Alderman Smith, Alderman Tunney, Alderman Gardner, Alderman Kappelman, Alderman Martin, Alderman Osterman, Alderman Haddon, Alderman Silverstein. Alderman Maldonado is an aye. There are 49 yeas, no nays. The matter is passed. Alderman Thompson on the motion to reconsider. Madam President, motion to reconsider the vote. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. No. The motion fails. Alderman Nuegas back. Madam President, item number two is an ordinance 
concerning the authority to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Illinois International Port District for the redevelopment of Butler Drive Rail and Butler Drive Road. The item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Madam President, item number three is an ordinance concerning the authority to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Park District for uh, the redevelopment of McInerney Park. Uh, the item was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. No objection to order. Madam President, item number four is an ordinance concerning the authority to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Chicago Park District for the redevelopment of Bosley Park Playground. Um, the item was approved by the committee by voice vote. And if no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. Hmm. Madam President, items 5 through 10 uh, regard monthly settlements through the Law Department and will be placed on file with the Clerk. Uh, if there's no objection, I ask that these, uh, pardon me, uh, items 11 through 13 are item authorizations for the payment of various small claims against the City, denial of payments of various small claims against the City, and orders authorizing the payment of senior citizen rebate sewer claims. If there's no objection, I ask that these items be placed in the omnibus. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, item 14 consists of two orders authorizing Corporation Council to enter into and execute settlements in two different cases. Our first case is Julisha Lee, individually and as special administrator to the estate of Samira Lee, deceased, versus Eric Rice, Truck, sales, truck Tire Sales Incorporated, and the City of Chicago. The orders were, this order was approved by the committee by voice vote. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote in the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection. Sorry. Alderman Riley. Thank you, Madam President, I uh, wish to be re recorded as voting aye on the first item on the finance agenda. No objection. Thank you. The, Hearing Madam no objection, President, so ordered. Madam President, the second item is uh, the case of uh, Tyrone Scott versus the City of Chicago and Chicago police officers. Um, this case was approved in the committee by voice vote. And if no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, that concludes my report of the City Council Committee on Finance. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Harris. Thank you, Madam President. For the Committee on Committee's Rules, which met July 22, 2019, I have two items to report on. A proposed resolution regarding the City Council for participation in a census. Um, one, a special committee of the City Council was created. Two, Alderman Raboris elected as the chairman of the Special Legislative Committee on the Census. Both passed committee by unanimous voice vote um, of the committee members present. Item two, Ordinance 2019-3812, correcting the City Council Journal of Proceedings of April 10th, 2019, passed by the committee by unanimous voice vote uh, by members present. I move to concur in the recommendation of the committee by the last most favorable roll call report of the Committee on Finance and the same motion to reconsider if there are no objections. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my report. Alderman Dow. Yes, thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council reporting for your Committee on the Budget and Government Operations, which held meetings on July 15th and July 22nd, 2019. The following uh, items were recommended for passage by the committee. 
One, a substitute ordinance concerning an amendment to the annual appropriations ordinance year 2019 within Fund 925 for various city departments. And two, a direct introduction from the Office of Budget and Management concerning a proposed amendment to the 2019 annual appropriation ordinance. I move passage of these items by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to reconsider. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Alderman Vegas. Madam President, members of the City Council, reporting for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development, which held a meeting on July 16, 2019, the Committee has a series of reports recommending passage of the following items. Item 1 is an ordinance for a Class 7C tax status for property at 1725 to 1741 West 21st Street in the 25th Ward. I move passage of this item by the first favorable roll call vote the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. Item two is an ordinance for a class 6B tax incentive for property located at 3900 to 3946 South Normal Avenue in the 11th Ward. Alderman Lopez is wish, wishes to be recognized uh, to speak on this item. Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to thank our chairman and uh, your staff for working with the City Council Committee. At committee, I was a no because I felt that we weren't getting the answers and responses that we need. And I'm pleased to report that after speaking with our chairman uh, and hearing about changes coming forward from your administration, that we'll be addressing these tax breaks in a different manner so that we are more inclusive and cooperative. And for that, I'm happy to support it today. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Lopez. Alderman Villegas. Madam President, I move passage of this item by the same roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, item threes through nine are a series of appointments of members to the special service areas. Vania Donnell Diamond to SSA number five, Maricela Berner to SSA 28-2014, Amy Laria to SSA 29-2014, Mark Astrop to SSA 60, Maria Jimenez to SSA 62, Robert Smith to SSA 62, and Patrick Tarpey to SSA number 62, which I move passage by the same roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, item 10 has been held in committee. This concludes my report. Thank you. Alderman Smith. Thank you. Madam President and members of the City Council, on behalf of the City Council Committee on Ethics and Government Oversight, which held a meeting on July 17, 2019, the committee considered and recommended passage of one item, a substitute ordinance amending chapters 2-56 2-156 of the Municipal Code of Chicago regarding government ethics. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage of this ordinance by the first favorable roll call vote of the, excuse me? I, if, no, if no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage of this ordinance by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. There are no objections, so ordered. Thank you very much. That concludes my report. And I'd like to personally thank Chairman Smith, Vice Chair Martin, and all the members for the passage of this important ordinance. Thank you very much. Next is uh, Alderman Sawyer. Thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council, reporting on the Committee on Health and Human Relations for which a meeting was held July 18, 2019. I hereby recommend that the following resolution do hereby pass. It call for condemnation on other states' legislative efforts to diminish women's reproductive rights granted under Roe v. Wade. If no one wants to speak on the matter, and with the exception of Alderman Cardona, Posado, Raboyas, and Napolitano, I move to apply the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider this item. Hearing no objection, so ordered. This concludes my report. Thank you. Alderman Osterman, housing. 
Thank you, Madam President, uh, members of the City Council. Reporting for your Committee on Housing and Real Estate, which held a meeting on July 17, 2019, the Committee has a series of reports recommending passage for the following items. Items 2, 3, 4 are ordinances approving lease agreements at 1544-1558 South Lawndale in the 24th Ward, 3800-3804 West Chicago Avenue, 3812 West Chicago Avenue in the 27th Ward, in 3626 West Ogden, 3637 3631, I'm sorry, 3641 West Ogden, and 2118 2126 South Millard, and 2119 2125 in South Lawndale in the 24th Ward. I move passage of these items by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Items 5, 6, 7, and 8 are ordinance for the sale of city-owned property at 212 North Keystone Avenue in the 28th Ward, 4430 South Shields in the 3rd Ward, 2012 South um, Canal Port in the 11th Ward, 5882 South Halstead, 1052-1056 West 59th Street, 1114-1120 West 59th Street and 5800 South Ada in the 16th Ward. I move passage for these items on the same roll call vote as the Committee on Finance. First vote on the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number nine is in agreement with Dearborn Real Estate Board, DBA, Dearborn Real Estate Realist Board, to administer the Community Receiver Training Program utilizing affordable housing opportunity funds for which I move the passage of the same roll call of the committee, vote of the Committee on Finance and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Items 10, 12, and 11 are ordinance for the sale of city-owned property at 2021-2023 West Washington Boulevard in the 27th Ward, 2019 West Washington Boulevard, Boulevard in the 27th Ward, and 434-436 East 46th Street, 46th Place in the Third Ward, which I move passage by the same roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and un Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. So ordered. This concludes my report. Alderman Mitz, Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Thank you and good morning, Madam President, members of the City Council. I'm reporting for the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. We held a meeting on June 26, 2019, to consider the following ordinance. 02019-3923 was an ordinance prohibiting peddling in portion of the fourth ward. 11 ordinance regarding moratoriums in various wards, the 2nd, the 17th, the 26th, 28th, 34th, 35th, 37th, and the 50th ward. These recommendations were concurred in by a voice vote of the members of the License Committee on June the 29th, 2019. Madam President, I move that the City Council concur in the recommendation of the License Committee by the same roll call vote as item number one on the Committee on Finance and the same unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, Alderman Burnett. Thank you very much, Madam President. Reporting for your Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, for which a meeting was held on Thursday, July 11, 2019. Before the committee, there were 340 items. There were 321 routine items that passed and 19 routine traffic items that did not pass. There was one substitute ordinance introduced by 42nd Ward Alderman Brendan Riley, co-sponsored by 2nd Ward Alderman Brian Hopkins, an amendment of Municipal Code Section 9-4-010 to prohibit drifting and drag racing of vehicles on the public way. There were two substitute ordinances introduced by 13th Ward Alderman Marty Quinn, the first substitute ordinance was an amendment of Municipal Code Section 3-56-050 by further regulating fees on automobile classification. 
The second substitute ordinance was an amendment of parking meters on South Major Avenue. If there is no objections, I move for the passage of these ordinances in the omnibus. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. So ordered. Alderman Brookings, Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Thank you, Madam uh, President. Reporting for your Committee on Transportation and Public Way, a meeting which was held on July 17th, the following ordinances were passed by a majority of the members present. Pages 2 through 77 include 833 ordinances for grants of privilege introduced by local aldermen from wards 1 through 6, 8 through 15, and 17 through 50. Pages 78 through 81 include 68 ordinances for canopies introduced by local aldermen from wards 1 through 5, 10, 12, 13, 15, 19, 22, 25, 27, 31 to 33, 37, 39, 40, 42 to 45, 47, 48, and 50. And pursuant to Rule 14, Alderman Tunney abstains from voting on item 02019-4727 on page 81. Pages 82 through 92 include 123 ordinances for sidewalk cafes introduced by local aldermen from wards 1 through 4, 8, 10, 11, 22, 25 through 27, 30, 32, 33, 35, 38, 39, 40, and 42 through 50. Pages 93 through 98 include 46 ordinances for miscellaneous items introduced by local aldermen in Ward 1, 2, 4, 7, 10, 12, 27 through 29, 32, 36, 39, 42 through 44, 46 through 48, and 50. On page 99, Item 1 is an amendment to taxicab stand number 799, located in the 42nd Ward. Page 100, item 1 is a subdivision located in the 11th Ward. And page 101 includes two dedication ordinances located in the 28th and 42nd Ward. If there are no objections, I move the, the passage of these items by the last most favorable roll call item on the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so order. Thank you, Alderman. Thank you. That concludes my report. <clears throat> Alderman Garza, I understand that you have an item that you want to discuss. Oh, yes, Madam President, I do. Oh, I forgot. Thank you very much. Alderman Garza, I, I apologize. One moment, if you may. Alderman Irvin. Thank you, Madam President. I, I just wanted to rise. I just wanted to recognize a group of young men. I know we're going to probably spend a lot of time uh, on this uh, Fair Work Week ordinance, but I wanted to recognize them before they had to leave. Uh, this is a group of young men from West Garfield Park from the Mayafa Redemption Project, uh, led by uh, Reverend Marshall Hatch, Jr., and who has been uh, seriously working with young men who've had some challenging backgrounds, but is working to rehabilitate them in the spirit of the, the Mayafa, if you may not know, it represents the Middle Passage uh, from Africa here to the United States. We just want to recognize these young men for the work that they're doing in the West Garfield Park community. The one standing right in the front. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. All right, Chairman Garza. Thank you, Madam President. Reporting for the Committee on Workforce Development, there was one very important item on the agenda, an amendment of the Municipal Code by adding new Chapter 1-25 entitled Chicago Fair Work Week Ordinance, 02019-3928. The ordinance passed unanimously in committee. I, if there is no one that would like to speak to this, I move due passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee in Finance, report on the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Thank you, Madam President. This concludes my report for the Committee on Workforce Development. Oh, I'm sorry. 
you want to speak on this? I do. <laughs> <clears throat> but let me grant your motion first. <clears throat> um, I want to express my gratitude to this council for supporting this landmark legislation, which is the most expansive in the nation. Thanks to the leadership of this chamber, uh, particularly Alderman Garza, workers in Chicago are now guaranteed fair working conditions, encompassing new industries, and providing relief to tens of thousands of working families as they seek to maximize their income and care for their families. I also want to acknowledge the coalition of business, labor groups, and other organizations for their hard work over two and a half plus years, and in partnership over these last two and a half months, in arriving at a solution that was both beneficial to our city's employees and employers. In passing this legislation, I can't help but think of my own mother, growing up as she struggled to navigate the uncertainty of not knowing when she'd be working as a health care aide. Now employees will have predictable pay, the right to decline schedule changes, choice of additional work hours when available, and the right to rest and, re and request a flexible working arrangement. Measures that are truly transformative to the lives of parents taking care of their children, adults serving as caretakers for older relatives, students seeking an education, families making a budget every month, and the list goes on and on. This ordinance marks a key step in our mission to work together to strengthen conditions for Chicago's working families and communities, ensuring we continue to move Chicago forward as one city that is more prosperous and equitable for every resident. And I also have to say, I want to th say thank you to my team, which was large, worked hard through a lot of difficulty, and brought it home. So thank you so much, everyone. Anything further, Alderman Garza? Um, yes, Madam President, I would like to, to say something. Um, the past four weeks have been trying, difficult, and long, but I too feel that this has been one of the most transparent, open, collaborative processes that I've ever seen taking place in City Council. Um, I commend the work that we've all done together, and this is what good government looks like. Um, I'm very proud of my colleagues in my committee for voting this out of committee unanimously. Um, and I think this ordinance is, well, I know this ordinance is going to protect hundreds of thousands of workers, and we've just changed the lives of many people. So for that, I'm very proud of everyone. Um, and I want to make clear that what I submitted on May 29th is not what passed. It was a substitute ordinance. And if no one else would like to speak to this, <clears throat> that concludes my report on the Committee on Workforce Development. Alderman Rod uh, Rodriguez. Um, you know, this, this, this bill is definitely going to change the lives. Um, and in my vast experience here on the council, the many uh, weeks that I've been here, um, you know, this is a real learning experience. And um, it was an experience in which I got to in, I see various folks at the table, you and your leadership mayor, uh, your staff. Um, but I, I labor... Uh, the business community, but I, I've, I've got to say that I'm going to reserve my warmest heartfelt thanks and appreciation for the hard work, dedication, round-the-clock work for our Chairman Sue Garza. Give her a round of applause. So, uh, Mayor, as, as chief co-sponsor of this bill, and, and as one of your uh, first efforts, we got a uh, we got a high bar now. Indeed. Let's keep on going. Thank you, um, Alderman Tunney. President, and um, as uh, Chairman Garza uh, said, uh, this was not the ordinance that was introduced in May. Um, I too have been working on this ordinance for two and a half years, and was not an early supporter of it. Um, but we did hear from so many in, about, in, in some respects, the unsavory activities of employers and the abuse of employees. Um, I, too, learned a lot 
during this process. Um, but as we evolved, as Chairman Garza said, over the last four weeks, uh, nonstop, and thank God the city isn't uh, applicable on this ordinance because the IGA staff did not have the right to rest, I don't think, for the, for the 12 hour period or 11, whatever we agreed upon at the end. But at the end of the day, uh, Alderman Beal said it as good as anybody uh, all sides are not happy. Um, there's a two year study period to see. Uh, what we uh, did right and what we did better. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, while our mayor's uh, mother and her story resonates with all Chicagoans, uh, what also resonates is um, a concern for safety net hospitals and hospitals in general. So as the mayor said, this is the most expansive uh, in the country and the first municipality to include hospitals. Uh, I do want to say that we really need to take a serious look at this because uh, there are safety net hospitals that are the sole employer or the sole safety net for many, many parts of our city. So we've got to take a real close look at how this is. I know there's a waiting period uh, for this, but uh, we heard loud and clear that we cannot afford to be closing safety net hospitals. And uh, while there's, you know, most hospitals are not for profits, and at the end of the day, I know we're cynical about salaries of some of these CEOs and some of the entry-level workers. We'll find the right solution, as we always do. I do want to make sure and commend the mayor because uh, uh, of her leadership of making sure that she took all sides in to this uh, very important ordinance. Um, that we hope we got it right, uh, and. Um, you know, I grew up in the city saying this city is good for business. If you can't do business is in, in Chicago, you can't do business. That was under a, a certain daily, uh, not for M. Um, but I think that we have to make sure that our city is open for businesses and that 95, if not 99% of employers try to do the right thing. I'll just say 95, not 90. And uh, we, uh, this ordinance is really far reaching, and uh, I hope take a, a serious eye and make sure that we are open for employers, employees, workers of all sorts, from the CEO to the entry level work. So I was very much involved with this process and um, I'm comfortable with where we're at and I really wanted to publicly thank your leadership on this. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman. Let me, let me just add and pick up on, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Alderman Osterman. I'm sorry, Kappelman. Pardon me. We're neighbors. Uh, in uh, 2012, I, I went to uh, a three-week program at Harvard Kennedy School of Government, and uh, legislators from all over the world attended that. And what we learned is that the mark of a good legislator is the uh, legislator's ability to negotiate, especially negotiations um, for a win-win or where both sides lose a little bit. Um, in these days, it's especially hard, especially coming from the White House where polarization is celebrated. Uh, this is a time where we have to all come together and negotiate. This is one city uh, with 50 wards, and with all of us working together, we can make great things happen, and especially with uh, this particular ordinance. And thank you, uh, uh, Alderman Sue Garza, and thank you, Mayor Lightfoot. And now, Alderman Osterman. Madam President, I want to commend you um, on pushing this forward. Uh, significant effort that's going to help working class um, residents of Chicago. Uh, I want to commend Sue Garza. I don't know that I've seen her get choked up before, um, but this is a significant ordinance that's going to affect many, many Chicagoans in every single neighborhood. Um, it also is not going to hurt small businesses that we desperately need to employ people. And I think that's also something that um, Alderman Tunney, as a business owner himself, um, will continue to hark on, but um, we need employers, those people that invest their own money and take a risk in our city, to employ people. I think all of us are in this together. So I think today's a historic step for our city. Um, we have to watch how this goes, and we got to continue to work to create jobs um, in every corner of Chicago. Thank you. Our Alderman Carlos Rosa. Much, Madam President. 
I do rise uh, to support this ordinance, commend uh, you for your leadership, and commend uh, Chairwoman Garza for her leadership on this. And to commend the workers of Chicago that have been fighting so hard to make this legislation a reality. It was in May 1st of 1886 that 20,000 workers took to Michigan Avenue to demand eight hours uh, a day with no cut in because they wanted freedom. They wanted to be able to have eight hours of work, eight hours to sleep, and eight hours to do what they want. So that they could have control over the time that they would spend with their families, for the time that they would dedicate their hobbies, to leisure, to do the important housework they needed to get done. I remember not too long ago at the beginning of this council when our mayor presented us with a advanced schedule of all the city council meetings coming up for the rest of the year, we stood up in a standing ovation. And that's because advance notice and fair scheduling is a good thing. And so it is a, a great thing that we are doing today, extending that same right, extending that same freedom, that same security to hundreds of thousands of workers across the city of Chicago. And we shall all be very proud to continue the work of this great city, a union. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Thompson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too rise in support of this. I, I want to uh, congratulate our chair, uh, Alderman Sue Garza, for a job well done, listening to both sides and, and balancing uh, interests for all parties. Uh, I congratulate all those who were involved with this and echo what Alderman Tunney said in terms of balancing the workers' rights as, as well as being conducive to business, making sure that we continue to build on momentum we've had over the last number of years as being the leader of corporate relocations coming to Chicago. We have the talent that comes here, graduates that come here, as well as the workers, uh, fine workforce, and working with our uh, city colleges to train our residents for the next generation. I, I represent the Stockyards Industrial Park, which is a large employer. And uh, I think as we move forward, like demonstrated with this ordinance, we need to listen to one another be able to be uh, hearing what we're, what both sides are saying, make sure that we continue to be a place for businesses to relocate and to do business and do right while doing well. Thank you. Alderman Lisbada. Very grateful for this opportunity to stand in recognition and support of this ordinance. I think it recognizes something very Simple but striking, that people who care for others professionally have people that they care for. You know, they need the stability to be able to do in their homes what they do so well in their workplace. And I, I see a lot of noble resumes in this council chamber, but if you have an ignoble resume like mine that includes Burger King and Barnes and & Noble and staffing agencies, you know what it looks like, what it feels like to show up on Saturday to try to figure out if you're working on Sunday. So I'm glad and I think about the friends of mine who will benefit directly from this ordinance. I'm grateful that we're passing today. Thank you. Alderman Signature Lopez. Thank you, Mayor. I also wanted to commend you, uh, Mayor and uh, Alderman Sugar, and Mike Rodriguez for pushing forward this legislation and making sure that we make a priority to represent our working class um, community. Uh, is, uh, hopefully this is, a, this is a blueprint of how we conduct uh, discussions and future bills. Uh, I've seen the, the hard work of the sponsor, especially Alderman Sue Garza, bringing the different sectors together, the private sector, so the nonprofit sector, labor, and uh, obviously um, the, the legislators to make sure that we push forward bills that address the, the issues in our community so that we create jobs that are also we're respectful of our workers. So flex, uh, having the flexibility, but also the respect for, for the jobs that they do to make sure they have time also with their families and to actually they conduct um, their, their, their lives. So I want to just commend you, and hopefully this is the beginning for a new day for the city. There's other legislation coming up, and I hope this is a good blueprint of what we can achieve when we work together. So thank you again. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, Alderwoman Rodriguez-Sanchez. Madam President. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, to everybody that worked to make this happen, but particularly I want to thank um, the workers that organized to make these demands, and I want to acknowledge the leadership of a very strong woman that is becoming a role model. Um, thank you, Sue Garza, for doing this work. Um, it's important work. It's basic. I think that everybody should have the right to be able to plan their lives in advance. 
um, it will contribute to the health of the people, to the mental health, to the physical health, and the, and the health of the families. Um, so this is a, a really important thing, a really basic thing, and I'm really glad that, that we are being, we're being able to achieve this. Alderman Wegg is back. Thank you, Madam President. I just also want to extend mm -hmm. congratulations to Alderwoman Klaus Garth. Worked very hard over the last month, actually a couple of years on this issue. Um, and also want to say thank you to you and Alderman Tunney or Chairman Tunney for listening. I know that uh, these conversations went back a long time, and we should also give uh, thanks to uh, former Chairman Pat O'Connor, who sat both sides at the table, really started talking through these issues, looking at them one by one, and helping us walk through those um, particular problems with it on each side. So I think um, there was, this was a fantastic way to create an ordinance that will benefit the workers of our city, but also make sure that we're protecting uh, those who are creating these businesses and continue to work together. But um, kudos to Alderwoman Sadlowski Garza for really pulling this together at the end and to you for listening very closely to everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alderman Cardenas. Thank you, Madam President. I I want to congratulate you and also my colleague, Alderman Sugarsa, for her tremendous effort and work. And um, not to be remiss if I don't thank UFCW and uh, its representative, Zach, uh, for years uh, of uh, advocating uh, of this particular uh, issue. Um, Office of Labor Standards has been uh, also approved, and I would imagine they'd be working alongside to make sure that this is uh, implemented uh, and everybody abides by the rules. Um, you, Madam President, you talked about legislating more in this body, and that's exactly what's happening in your leadership. Uh, this is a check on that commitment, and thank you for that. Uh, more than ever, I've never seen this council churn out more important legislation for the people of the city, and it's all thanks to you. Thank you. Alderman Irvin. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, this ordinance has is, is definitely taken some twists and some turns during the time it started two and a half years ago. Um, I know that uh, at the end of the day, the object was to make life better for low-income uh, wage earners. I think that this goal has been achieved uh, through this ordinance. However, um, as any ordinance, uh, it goes through its uh, iterations and changes. Uh, one thing, and I'm glad we do have a provision to come back and revisit this, because I think we need to study the effects on both the the employers and the employees. Um, as we continue to go through this and we continue to look at this, we just need to make sure that this is, uh, this is gonna do what we intend for it to do. Number one, is to help, uh, help to lift some of our low wage earners out of desperate situations. And I go back to what Alderman Laspada stated about showing up on Friday to figure out if he's gotta work on Saturday. Uh, that's not fair to our workers. And again, uh, as I stated, if you heard yesterday, um, this is going to create better planning for everybody. It's nice to know when you can spend time with your family, and we hope that our employers get an opportunity to study their trends, see what's going on, and, and better plan their uh, workforce versus trying to figure it out on the fly the day before or walking into the ship. Uh, being Living on the on-call life, I know we live an on-call life, but that's what we signed up for, and we expect that. But to raise a, to deal with the family, to raise a family, especially for some of our young ladies uh, that are in this predicament, is a very tough on them to make these arrangements for childcare and do these other things to find out that you're about to lose eight hours or 12 hours of pay it is, a bit, is a bit of a challenge. So glad that we were able to find a uh, resolution on this issue. And, and, and as we study this over the next two years, hopefully we can make some more adjustments and actually bring more families into this predicament. I know we have some exemptions. However, I think if we can uh, make all of our families in this city uh, give them the same luxuries, I think that would be best for our, our communities. Thank you. Alderman King. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to briefly say uh, this is a great ordinance uh, for working people, uh, for the city of Chicago. I want to thank my colleague, uh, Alderman Garza, uh, for her leadership and mayor, uh, for your leadership and just the process. I think process is really important. Um, and so the fight for 15 should be pretty easy for 2021, right? <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, 
before we close out this discussion, I just want to uh, touch on a couple of points that some have raised. Um, Alderman Tunney raised the question of safety net hospitals. We spent a lot of time talking to them and making sure that we were doing everything possible to not ad adversely impact them. Based on my discussions with some of the leaders, their biggest issue is Medicaid reimbursement, and I've committed to working with them to make sure that it doesn't take another 15 years for them to get an increase in Medicaid reimbursement rates. So that's something I'm committed to. I also want to be clear, um, yes, this is intended to make sure that we are taking care of our workers so that they are fairly treated in the workplace. But as many of you have indicated, we have to be about growth in the city. And growth includes making sure that our businesses are able to function. Um, I'm going to credit Alderman Irvin, but it may have um, been the brainchild of others. We have a look back period and a review. It's going to be a tough lift for uh, business affairs and, and uh, consumer uh, protection, but we are committed to making sure that we get this right. We built in um, to the ordinance the ability to monitor what's happening both from the worker's perspective but also from the business perspective. We're going to build um, data analytics so we can get that work done and we'll be reporting back to um, this body on where we are once this legislation goes into effect. But again, Alderman Garza, kudos to you. Can't say enough about your incredible leadership and patience. Uh, I want to thank our friends in organized labor. I want to thank the business community. And I want to thank all of you. This was a big, tough lift. This is something that we've not done before, I think, um, as a city. We're taking on an enormous uh, mandate that we have to build infrastructure in order to be able to, um, to handle. But we'll get it done because this is what's right for our city. So thank you all again. <laughs> Alderman Garza. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> so, um, Madam President, I'd like to renew my motion and I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the committee in finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection. Uh, Alderman Brookins, do you want to be heard on this? Okay. Hearing no objection, so order. Thank you, Madam President. President, this concludes my report on the committee and workforce development. Woo! Madam President, may I approach the bench? You may. Uh-oh. I can't give you a bottle of champagne, but I'm going to give you a bottle of Southside hot sauce. Alderman Brookins. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I, I'd like to uh, temporarily, suspend, temporarily suspend the rules just to acknowledge the students from after school matters, curious legal minds who might be sleeping sitting up in the gallery. But uh, they are a great bunch of kids, and I just wanted to recognize them before they have to catch their bus. Thank you. All right. Alderman Moore, briefly. While he's doing that, to piggyback on here is we have a, a lot of our interns here, and I know other people may have their interns here. I have my <laughs> interns up in the gallery if they would stand up, and any other interns here from One Summer Chicago, Mayor, you've done a great job with that, and um, I appreciate all of them for being here. Thank you. Alderman Tunney, uh, Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have a series of reports. We actually had four meetings, our last uh, city council meeting, and I'll start with a uh, series of reports, video zoning landmarks, building standards, for which a meeting was held on April 23, 2019. The following ordinances and orders were passed by a majority of the members present. Page one contains two map amendments in the first ward. I hereby move passage of these items by the last most favorable vote of the Finance Committee report and associated motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Next, presenting a series of reports for your Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, for which a meeting 
was held on June 25th. The following ordinances and orders were passed by a majority of the members present. Page 1 contains one aldermanic map amendment in the 11th Ward. Pages 1 through 11 contain various map amendments in the 1st, 2nd, 20th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 30th, 31, 32, 36, 40, 42, 43, 44, 45, and the 49th wards. Page 11 contains the historical landmark designation for the uh, Rainbow Pylons and the Legacy Walk located at 3244 through 3710 North Halstead and 3243 through 37 North Halstead in the 44th and 46th wards. Um, I'm going to uh, beg the indulgence of my colleagues by saying a few words on the uh, landmark rainbow pylons. Um, we do in the audience here, I believe Victor Salvo is here, uh, but I wanted to say the designation will make the Legacy Walk and the Rainbow Pylon Streetscape the only multi-acre site in the world to be declared a landmark because of its importance to the LGBT people. Again, Victor is here, uh, Lori Cannon is here, Rick Garcia is here. Um, I want to thank them, the Legacy Board, the North Halstead Business Alliance for their leadership and stewardship on, the monu uh, on these monuments. And on behalf of Alderman Kappelman and I, um, we want to thank this, the Landmarks Division, uh, Mayor Emanuel, and of course you, Mayor Lightfoot, for your strong support uh, in seeing this uh, across the finish. So thank you on that. Uh, and I just want to recognize your guests are here right behind you, Alderman Tunney. Oh, I don't recognize them, uh, Mayor. <laughs> Only 40 years of recognizing them, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, make sure. Okay. Page 12 uh, contains various large signs over 100 square feet in area 24 feet above grade in the 1st, 11th, 28th, 32nd, 39th, 41st, 42nd, 44th, and 50th wards. I hereby move passage of these items by the last most favorable roll call of the Finance Committee report and associated motion to reconsider. Okay, next. Presenting a, series of re uh, presenting a series of reports for your committee on zoning landmark and building standards for which a meeting was held on July 9th. The following ordinances and orders were passed by a majority of members present. Page one contains one mayoral text amendment of municipal code titles two, four, 5, 7, 13, 14A, 14B, 14C, 14E, 14R, and 15 regarding technical corrections related to the Chicago construction and building codes. Page 1 through 7 contain various map amendments in the 1st, 2nd, 10th, 11th, 12th, 26th, 27th, 29th, 32nd, 36th, 39th, and 48th wards. Page 7 contains various large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade, uh, those being in the 21st, 42nd, and 47th wards. I hereby move passage of these items by the last most favorable vote of the Finance Committee re report and associated motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Finally, presenting a series of reports for your committee on zoning landmark and building standards, which held a meeting on July 23rd, 2019. The following ordinances and orders were passed by a majority of members present. Page one through six contain various map amendments. The first, second, 11th, 21st, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 29th, 30th, 33rd, 35th, 42nd, 46th, and 47th wards. Page 7 contains various large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade, in the 4th, 11th, and 37th wards. I hereby move passage of these items by the last most favorable roll call vote of the Finance Committee and associated motion. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Mayor, I want to thank my committee members for their patience. Uh, it was a busy month, and uh, that concludes my reports. Thank you, sir.
Uh, next is matters on the agreed calendar. Alderman Harris. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I have received from the clerk's office a listing of items proposed for the agreed calendar consisting of congratulatory, commemorative, and memorial resolutions offered by Alderman Dow, King, Sawyer, Harris, Thompson, Quinn, Alderman Burke, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Lopez, <laughs> Alderman Lopez, Alderman Lopez, I'm telling you, uh, Alderman Moore, Alderman Curtis, Scott, uh, Scott Dow King, uh, Maldonado, Raboris, Alderman Austin, Alderman Nugent, um, Alderman Riley Smith, Alderman Osterman. I move in the, uh, that, uh, the passage of the agreed calendar, my, Madam President. Here you know, Alderman Moore, do you wish to be heard? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. And, and one of those resolutions, and I'll be very short, Madam President, was um, for um, Brother Manir Muhammad, who um, would, would crow the coalition of the remembrance of Elijah Muhammad. But what he was greatly known for was um, his television show, having many elected officials on there. But I just want to publicly thank you, uh, Mayor, for uh, putting together a resolution for him, attending that service, and recognizing his great works um, in this city. Thank you so much. Thank you. I renew my motion to pass the agreed cap. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you. Uh, new business. The clerk will call the wards beginning with the 50th. Claims, free permits, license fee exemptions referred to the Committee on Finance. Zoning amendments referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Traffic regulations, traffic control signals, and traffic signs referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Grants of privilege on and over the public way referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Exemption from physical barrier requirement for commercial driveway alley access for parking facilities, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Haddon has opposed, a proposed ordinance for amendment of Municipal Code Section 4-60-023 to allow additional package goods licenses on portions of West Devon Avenue which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Martin has proposed ordinance for amendment of Municipal Code Section 7-38-117 by establishing mobile food vehicle stand at 3420 North Plina Street, which is referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Almond Tunney has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Tunney also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of Municipal Code Section 4-60-023 to allow additional package goods licenses on portion of West Belmont Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Smith and Alman Tunney have a proposed ordinance for amendment of Municipal Code Section 9-64-090 to establish not-for-profit organization one-day residential parking permit pilot program for residential permit parking zones 142, 143, and 383, which is referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Almond Smith has proposed ordinance for an historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 227 West Menominee Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Napolitano has proposed ordinance for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 11601 West Tui Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Spizzato has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Spazzato also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portion of West Belmont Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Mitz has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portion of West Chicago Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Rodriguez Sanchez and others have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code Title I, Chapter 8, by adding a new section 1 8 120 commemorating and promoting public awareness of indigenous peoples, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Almond. Alderman Wagaspak and Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4 60 022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portion of West Diversity Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. I apologize, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Wagons Pack has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 2647 North Clybourne Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. 
Alderman Wagesback also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 10-28-031, to prohibit placement of fence or landscaped element within two feet of curbs, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Telefiero has a proposed resolution to call for hearings on the Chicago Police Department's murder clearance rate, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Alderman Telefiero also has a proposed resolution to call for hearings on the Chicago Police Department's classification of individuals as gang members and maintenance of gang database, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. Alman Burnett has a proposed ordinance for a release of restrictive use covenant regarding vacation of public alley with an area bounded by West Washington Boulevard, North Bishop Street, West Madison Street, and North Ogden Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Burnett also has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 333 North Green Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Maldonado and others have a proposed resolution for submission of a public question by a referendum to Chicago voters at February 26, 2019, at, at, at the referendum question to voters of the City of Chicago proposing an increase in the Chicago real estate transfer tax for purposes of providing resources for affordable housing and services to combat homelessness, which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Alman Maldonado has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 17-10-0101 to establish a pilot program in the 26th Ward to further regulate parking and loading standards for existing residential buildings or residential uses, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Cicho Lopez has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Cicho Lopez also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-6-050, by further regulating prohibited acts of residential real estate developers, which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Alman Brookins has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-60-022, and 4-60-023 to disallow additional alcoholic liquor and package goods licenses on portions of various public ways, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alvin O'Shea has a proposed resolution for submission of a public question by referendum to the voters of the City of Chicago, proposing an increase in the City of Chicago real estate transfer tax to meet City's funding obligations concerning police and fire annuity and benefit funds, which is referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alderman O'Shea has a proposed order for the historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 10244 South Longwood Drive, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning and Landmarks and Building Standards. Alderman O'Shea also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 3-33-030, concerning allocation of portion of property transfer tax to fund Firemen's Annuity and Benefit Fund of Chicago, Policemen's Annuity and Benefit Fund of Chicago, Municipal Employees Annuity and Benefit Fund of Chicago, and Laborers and Retirement Board Annuity and Benefit Fund of Chicago which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Almond Curtis has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Bishop George W.C. Walker Sr. Boulevard, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Lopez and others have a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Chapter 2-92, by adding a new Section 2-92-583 to prohibit contractors and subcontractors who assist in enforcement of federal civil immigration law from doing business with city, which is referred to the Committee on Contracting Oversight and Equity. Alman Lopez and others also have a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 2-8-041, to prohibit outside employment for aldermen, which is referred to the Committee on Ethics and Government Oversight. Alman Lopez and others also have a proposed resolution calling for the Commissioner of the Department of Planning and Development to require applicants for city-owned land sales, land use agreements, and land swaps within Greater Inglewood Community to obtain letter of local aldermanic support before submitting any applications which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Almond Lopez has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 5122 South Archer Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Lopez also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-60-024 and section 4-60-130 concerning new regulations, concerning regulations for new liquor license premises and public awareness, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Lopez also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-384-020, further regulate operation of animal shelters, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Lopez also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-384-015, to regulate pet lease and finance agreements, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Harris has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, section 4-60-023, to disallow additional package goods licenses on portions of East 79th Street. Which is referred to the Committee on License 
consumer protection. Almond Sawyer and Almond Rodriguez have a proposed resolution to call for officials and agents of immigration and customs enforcement to cease mass deportation of, immigration fam of immigrant families, which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. Alderman, uh... Rodriguez Sanchez, briefly. No, she's been ahead of you. Um, I know the difference. I would like to uh, present, is it me? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. I would like to uh, present a motion to suspend the rules um, to make a few remarks in solidarity with the people of Puerto Rico. Hearing no object objection, briefly, please. Um, as many of you know, uh, Puerto Ricans are at the moment fighting to oust the current governor. Uh, there was a massive strike uh, last Wednesday where a million people came out to demand that the governor resigns. Um, the governor uh, of Puerto Rico has been accused of corruption. Um, there is a transcript of 889 pages of a chat, an encrypted chat where he makes homophobic, misogynist, and horrible remarks and threats to opponents. Um, the people of Puerto Rico are demanding his resignation. An impeachment process has already started. He has refused to resign. Um, I wanted to acknowledge the fight of the people of Puerto Rico. I tried to present a resolution, but the parliamentary process doesn't provide for it right now. But I wanted to make an acknowledgement of the people of Puerto Rico, how they're bravely fighting, and hoping that the rest of, um, of my colleagues also stand in solidarity with my people. Thank you. Thank you. And Alderman, just to be clear, this refers to... Folks, just to be clear, this refers to a resolution that's going to be referred yes. to committee. Thank you. Alderman... Mike Mar Rodriguez. All right, yeah, I got a, we got a little confused there. Um, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, I wanted to uh, thank Alderman Sawyer for his wonderful idea to condemn the recent uh, ICE raids that have been announced by our presidents. Uh, there is a resolution that he and I have worked on over the last several days and are presenting today that will be referred to the Human Relations Committee. I'd just like to say that uh, on July 18th, three female children, ages nine, 10 and 13, all of whom are U.S. citizens by birthright, were detained at O'Hare International Airport by U.S. Customs and Border Protection shortly after their arrival from Mexico for the apparent purpose of luring their parents to the airport. This is unconscionable. This is ridiculous. And I think as a city council, we should not stand for this. I'm looking forward our hearings moving forward. Thank you, Alderman uh, Sawyer, for presenting this to me and for us to work on this issue. Um, Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky stated that this was essentially kidnapping. And we should not allow for this in our city and in our nation. Citizen veterans, legal permanent residents can be, de uh, can be deported uh, despite their service to this nation. The opaque, capricious, and arbitrary immigration policies that have led to these situations must be challenged by all citizens of goodwill. In this nation of immigrants, such unconscionable conduct is inexcusable. I look forward to further conversation on this. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> let, me, let, me just add, let me just add that I became aware of this issue um, on that Friday and spoke directly with the head of Border Patrol at the airport who tried to give me a little bit of a song and dance, um, that the language that was in a letter that was presented by the lawyer of the mother um, wasn't sufficient, and he wouldn't give me a straight answer on what was necessary. I expressed to him my deep displeasure with his uh, conduct, and I think about a half an hour later, the children are reunited with their mother. We're not gonna tolerate this in Chicago. Thank you, Mayor, and I'd also like to say that today, uh, uh, Alderman uh, Ramirez Rosa and I introduced language to amend our welcoming city ordinance that is much in line uh, with what we're talking about here. 32 uh, signatures. Thank you to my colleagues for signing on to that effort as well. We look forward to, to, to amending the ordinance as well. Thank you. Alderman Mitchell for approval of the journal. Oh, sorry. 
Oh, I apologize. We're still on new business. Alderman Dow, briefly. Yes, this will be brief. Brief. I ask to uh, suspend the rules to um, introduce uh, to the body uh, the college interns that are here working with Comet during the summer. If they will stand, they are up in the uh, the balcony, and we welcome you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You can resume, please. Almond Harris today has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed sign boards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond King has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed sign boards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Dowell has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for, for issuance of permits for signed sign boards at 1550 South State Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Dowell also has a proposed order for the Historical Landmark Fee Waiver for the property at 2401 South Wabash Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Hopkins and others have proposed orders for amendment of municipal code, Title 13, by creating a new Chapter 13-150 entitled Bird-Friendly Design, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Lespada has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Section 4-60-022, to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portion of Northwestern Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond um, Gardner has a proposed ordinance order for the issuance of permits for signed sign boards at 5322 North Alston Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning. Almond um, Riley has, and others have a proposed ordinance for amendment of Municipal Code Section 9-80-095 concerning excessive standing of diesel-powered vehicles with engines running, which is referred to the Committee on Environment. Almond um, Riley ha also has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed sign boards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond um, Riley also has a proposed orders for amendment of municipal code, Chapter 18-11, by adding new Section 18-11-1106 concerning accessible parking spaces in multi-unit uh, residential occupancies, which is referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Almond, Almond Vasquez and others have proposed order to call for the commission of a pilot program concerning CIPP lined water main restoration, which was referred to the Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy. Almond Villegas has a proposed resolution to call for hearings on increased diversity among corporate boards and leadership, which is referred to the Committee on Economic, Capital, and Technology Development. Almond Villegas and others have proposed Ordinance for Amendment of Municipal Code, Chapter 2-92, to further regulate contract and bond executions. This is referred to the Committee on Finance. Almond Ramirez Rosa has proposed a resolution to call for hearings on assessment formula and model measuring working class Chicagoans having equitable property tax system that does not fuel displacement, which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Almond Ramirez Rosa and others have proposed a resolution to call for, he call for hearings on Cook County residential property tax assessment formula and model which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Almond Ramirez Rosa and others have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code by further regulating the city's welcoming ordinance and adding a new section 2-173-062 concerning immigration enforcement operations, which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. Two committees call the matters referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Almond Lopez. Public safety. Alderman Telefiero and others have a proposed ordinance entitled City of Chicago Homes for All Ordinance, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Telefiero and others also have a proposed order, or, ordinance to amend Chapter 2-20-030 of the Municipal Code concerning police powers of department employees, which is referred to the Committee on Aviation. Almond Irvin has a proposed ordinance for vacation of a portion of South Laughlin Street, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Irvin has a proposed ordinance for vacation of West Fifth Avenue within the area bounded by South Millard Avenue, West Congress Parkway, South Independence Avenue, and South Gar Garfield Park, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Irvin and others have a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 8-4 by adding a new section 8-4-014 concerning criminal, criminal loitering, which is referred to the Committee on Public Safety. 
Um, and Cicho Lopez and others have a proposed ordinance for Amendment of Municipal Code, Chapter 2-44, by further regulating affordable housing commitment and creating a new Section 2-44-085, expanding housing accessibility to low and moderate residents preserving long-term affordability, which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Alderman Taylor has a proposed ordinance for dedication of a public alley in the block bounded by East 62nd Street, East 63rd Street, South Greenwood Avenue, and South University Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alderman Taylor and others have a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, titles 2 and 3, by adding new sections 2-44-135 and 2-44-140 concerning Obama Collective Bargaining Agreement Residential Area Affordable Housing Pilot Program, and modifying section 3-33-060 concerning Chicago real property transfer tax, which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Alderman Harrison. And on there, it's the community, the Obama community benefit residential. Correct. Alman Thompson has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Title III, by further regulating Chicago property tax abatement provisions for spouses of fallen police officers, soldiers, and rescue workers, which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Alman Thompson has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed sign boards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Sedlowski Garza has a proposed ordinance for approval of a proposed Atwater 106th Street subdivision, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond King has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, chapter 9-68, by adding a new section 9-68-027 concerning operation of seasonal parking programs. This is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Dowell has proposed ordinance for, for issuance of permits for, for landmark property at 2401 South Wabash Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Laspata has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed sign boards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Almond Lisbada and others have proposed order to call for call for a feasibility study to explore alternative options to existing franchise agreement with Commonwealth Edison Company, which is referred to the Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy. Almond Lisbada and Alderman Maldonado have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portion of West North Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Thompson has a proposed ordinance to amend Rule 39 of the City Council's Rules of Order and Procedures calling, calling for at least one half of committee meetings to commence on or after 6 p.m. Refer to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Alman O'Shea and others have a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Title III, by adding a new Chapter 3-51 entitled Cannabis Tax, which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Alman Rodriguez Sanchez has a proposed resolution regarding solidarity with the people of Puerto Rico, which is referred to the Committee on Human Relations. Alman um, Cicho Lopez has a proposed ordinance for a street vacation for construction at 1101-1113 North Van Buren Street, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Beal has a proposed ordinance for a rededication of a portion of South Doty Street, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Burke has a proposed ordinance for vacation of 4044 through 4210 South Keeler Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Riley has a proposed ordinance for amendment of Chapter 13-72 of the Municipal Code by adding a new Section 13-72-085 concerning sale of condominium property, which is referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Alderman O'Shea and others have proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Chapter 7-24, by adding a new article, V-B, to regulate cannabis business establishments, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code, Title I, by adding a new Section 1-8-120 Commemorating and promoting public awareness of indigenous people, which is referred to the committee on the budget and government operations. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez and others have a proposed ordinance to amend Alderman Maldonado and others have a proposed 
ordinance for amendment of municipal code chapter 3-33 concerning Chicago real property transfer tax which is referred to the committee on finance Alderman Mitchell for the approval of the journal Madam President, I am not aware of any corrections to the journal and move that it be approved. All those in favor of approving the journal uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is carried. Unfinished business, Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I'm not aware of, of uh, any unfinished business. Miscellaneous bu business. Alderman Madam Mitchell. President, I'm not aware of any miscellaneous business. Uh, Alderman Mitchell, the date and time of the next meeting? I've handed up an ordinance uh, to the clerk stating that the date and time of the next meeting. Clerk, please read the uh, ordinance. Alderman Mitchell has an ordinance setting the date and time of the next meeting of the City Council of the City of Chicago for Wednesday, September 18th, 2019, at 10 o'clock a.m. in the City Council Chamber in City Hall. Alderman Mitchell. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The ordinance is passed. Roll call on the omnibus. Alderman Lespada, Alderman Hopkins, Alderman Dowell, Alderman King, Alderman Harrison, Alderman Sawyer, Alderman Mitchell, Alderman Harris, Alderman Beal, Alderman Sedlowski Garza, Alderman Thompson, Alderman Cardenas, Alderman Quinn. Alderman Burke, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Coleman, Alderman Moore, Alderman Curtis, Alderman O'Shea, Alderman Taylor, Alderman Brookins, Alderman Rodriguez, Alderman Tavares, Alderman Scott, Alderman Cicho Lopez, Alderman Maldonado, Alderman Burnett, Alderman Irvin, Alderman Telefiero, Alderman Roboyas, Alderman Cardona, Alderman Wagaspeck, Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez, Alderman Austin, Alderman Ramirez Rosa, Alderman Viegas, Alderman Mitz, Alderman Spizzato, Alderman Nugent, Alderman Viegas, Alderman Napolitano, Alderman Riley, Alderman Smith, Alderman Tunney, Alderman Gardner, Alderman Kappelman, Alderman Martin, Alderman Osterman, Alderman Haddon, Alderman Silverstein. The yeas are 50, the nays are zero. The motion passes. Alderman Thompson on the motion to reconsideration. I'm sorry. Just... Madam President, uh, motion to reconsider the vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say no. no. The motion fails. Alderman Mitchell on the motion to adjourn. There being no further business before the body, I move we stand adjourned. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. The motion is carried. The council is adjourned. Thank you.